socioeconomic phenomenon all across this country over the past three decades. The entire state of Nebraska is impacted by the Cornhuskers and their success and failures, and certainly no community more impacted than their hometown of Lincoln. Let's go to Tim Brandt now for more on this subject. Keith, they come from all corners of this state, and it seems as if weather is really no deterrent because this is the 137th consecutive sellout here in Lincoln, Nebraska. They just keep coming every single year. But football in the plains is more than that. It seems to have gone from an adventurous cult to a well-heeled religion, and they turn out in droves to attend the ceremony. Well, we decided to research this phenomenon, and so we visited one of the campus statisticians, and this is what we found in this report. Well, some of the most obvious things that we know is that there's 76,000 people, and as many people have said, on a Saturday that becomes the third largest city in the state. Well, another way to think about it is the state has roughly 1.6 million people, and uh, that means that one out of every 20 people on a, any given Saturday is in the Memorial Stadium watching the football game. We also know that there's a lot of people who travel great distances. Probably, oh, we figure maybe 10,000 or so who come from at least uh, two hours or two and a half hours away from Lincoln. Some of those people have uh, private planes that they fly in. You know, there's tailgate parties and, and all of that other things that's associated with, with it. But there are a number of people who travel great distances. And I think if you look around the stands, you'll see banners of Alaskans for Nebraska and Californians for Nebraska. The question then, why does football have such a tremendous impact or stronghold on Nebraskans? Well, I think primarily because uh, it's the only common denominator we have in the state. We're a million four hundred thousand people, have one major university, and we've had major college football here from before my time. And uh, it's one thing that we can all talk about and get together with, and, and we all love it. The colors of red and white are worn by virtually everybody in the state. In Harvard, Nebraska, we found two Cornhuskers who were proud of both their athletic and agricultural tradition. But there came a time when they had to decide which of the two was most important. Well, we just love, love sports. That's the reason we quit farming. I either had to quit farming or uh, athletics, so I, I quit, let the farming go and went to athletics, you know. And we just started going to Lincoln to the football games down there and basketball and it just growed. Folklore has it that in the state of Nebraska when a baby is born he's first given a football instead of a rattle. Well, I don't know about that but they all dream of playing for the Big Red. Oh it's uh ever since I've been a little kid it's always been my dream to come down here and play football and uh, uh, I've always ever since I can remember when I was five or six uh, when they won the national titles two in a row I've it's always been my dream to come down here and play. Coming down here and playing Nebraska football, I guess it is a childhood dream. Um, you can go anywhere about in the state and ask a, a child, you know, that, you know, five, ten years old that's playing football in his backyard, and a lot of them will have little Nebraska helmets on and that type of deal. And I guess I've played in the backyard with, you know, my two older brothers and all the neighbor kids. And and uh, and it comes Saturday, you either watch Nebraska football or you listen to it on the radio, and you can walk through any small town and you can hear Nebraska football coming over the radios and the stores and things like that. And it is a big phenomenon, and uh, you get a sellout crowd uh, game after game here, and it is something special, and, it, and it, it's meant a lot to me, and I think I've learned a lot through it as a person, too. Football here is a way of life, and the fans live vicariously through their players. We'll be back with more pregame right after this. The Nebraska football team this year will wear a small black decal on their helmet bearing the number 94 in memory of tight end Brian Hemer, who died recently from a self-inflicted gunshot wound at his home. Brian Hemer shared the starting duties at tight end for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. He was a mountain of a young man involved in athletics most of his young life, a mechanical engineering student with a 3.3 grade point average, an above average football player certainly for the Cornhuskers, highly respected by his teammates and all who knew him. Everyone in the state was shocked by his death. The man who brought him here to Nebraska, Coach Tom Osborne. Well, I guess something like that never completely is behind. It's part of your experience, but I think that the players have focused on football. Uh, you know, for a few days it was kind of hard to concentrate on football with the funeral hanging over our heads and, you know, the, the question of why, which still is with us. And, and Brian was a very popular guy and a, and a very good person. And... Uh, so that's been a difficult thing to handle. But uh, I guess uh, it's behind us as much as we can possibly have it behind us at this point. 
It is heartbreaking to lose one so young with so much promise. Now let's rejoin Jim Lampley after this. All right, thank you, Keith. The only beginning of the excitement of college football, as is evidenced by the fact that three teams in the top ten are not playing today. The idle teams, top-ranked Oklahoma, third-ranked Ohio State, and eighth-ranked Iowa. Oklahoma doesn't open its season until the 28th of September against Minnesota. Quickly now, look back at those games we told you about earlier. Penn State still leading Maryland 20-18, to 18, a little less than seven minutes to go in that football game at last report. Temple has gotten a touchdown, but so has Boston College, so it is 28-17. Boston College still leading Temple, and that game is now in the fourth quarter. And at Champaign, Illinois, Illinois with such high expectations coming into the season, trails Southern Cal, 17-0 at halftime. Mike White has a job on his hands. He tries to rev up the Illini for the second half against the powerful Trojans. Bino Cook, Doug Flutie, and I will be back at halftime, and I'll be here throughout the day with scores and updates of all the games around the country. We'll be taking you back to Keith in Lincoln, Nebraska, after this from our local stations. ABC Sports presents... CFA Football. From the Plains today, the Seminoles of Florida State and the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Danny McManus quarterbacks the Florida State Seminoles. He stepped to the four to win the starting job for the opening game and the opening win over Tulane, 38-12. McManus accounting for four touchdowns, running and passing. Running back Doug Dubose is a principal figure in the Cornhuskers offense. The Swift Jr. from Connecticut totaled 1,044 yards last season. Sharing time at the running back position, mind you. And he, too, is a candidate for the Heisman Trophy. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Stroh's and Stroh Light, the circle of sports beer. By Chevrolet, who invites you to see today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. By Manville. 21,000 people with one goal to be America's very best supplier. And by Mr. Goodrent and General Motors Parts, who help you keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. The Seminoles to Florida State. Last time they came to Lincoln, Nebraska, they won a ball game 18-14. The first time, I should say, they came. Second time, they lost. But they come this time with youth, but a lot of grit. And ranked 13th and 19th, depending on which poll you read. They opened with a 38-12 win over Tulane. Bobby Bowden, the coach, 10th year at Florida State. His record is 74-30 and 2. The Seminoles out of Tallahassee. And this sea of red exists for only one purpose in this community, and that is to stand and roar when the Cornhuskers of Nebraska make their appearance. Coming out of the tunnel. Ranked fourth and ninth, depending again on which poll you like. This is the opening game for Nebraska in 1985. Dr. Tom Osborne, 12th season head coach, 118-27-2. That's an 81% in winning. Remarkable. Long, lean, and lanky. Coming off heart surgery. Had a bypass operation earlier. And he is slighter than we've ever seen him, but seems in very good health. And here is the roar. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, along with Coach Frank Broyles. Frank, this game, as I see it, means more from a national posture, from a ranking point of view, for Florida State as a university and as a football team than it does to Nebraska. Keith, the clearest reason, Florida State is an independent. They live and die by the rankings. Should they lose today, they'll drop out, more than likely drop out of the rankings, and then they'll have to win four or five games to get back into those uh, rankings. Nebraska, on the other hand, they're looking to November, Oklahoma, the conference schedule. If they can win that, they go to the Orange Bowl, and they have a chance to win the national championship. Should they lose today, they won't drop out of the rankings. Inexperience normally translates in college football into aggressiveness. Inexperience, more often than not, will translate into a cautious approach, a tentative attitude. That seems to fit these two teams. Experience means knowledge, a lot of repetitions, 
and the players that are experienced react instinctively. They know what to do, and they can be very aggressive, and that's Nebraska since they have mostly third, fourth, and fifth-year players on their team, only one true sophomore in the top 44. Florida State, on the other hand, they're starting 11 sophomores and two freshmen, and they're likely to be tentative, to be cautious. But Bobby Bowden's personality belies that, Keith. He told me last night, we're going to throw the book at those guys, experience or not, and he will. I think it's hot enough at 93 degrees and about 125 or 30, maybe even 140 degrees down on the artificial surface. I think it's hot enough to be hazardous. Keith, the doctors will be there watching each of the players. It is a health hazard. But also the coaches have got to be concerned by their pattern of substituting, not to get extreme exhaustion. And the sequence that they will use is substitute early and get their starters out of there, give them a chance to play uh, real strong in the last half as the game dictates. It'll be interesting to see. Florida State has a 66 players dressed ready to play. Nebraska has about 103 dressed for the game. These two coaches, Tom Osborne of Nebraska, Bobby Bowden, Florida State, one and one against each other. Florida State won the toss, chose to kick off with the win. Nebraska then will have the first possession. Last time the Seminoles came here, they lost by 20. First time uh, under Bowden they came here, they won by four. It is a considered risk when you come to Lincoln, Nebraska to play a football game. It is a chore that some teams can't avoid. Others like to come here, and uh, there are some times when I wonder why because you know you're coming into what amounts to a collegiate mix master because the home crowd is solidly behind their team and it's almost always seemingly a very good team. Derek Schmidt will kick off. He's 180 pounds, about 20 years old, a sophomore out of Sarasota. He will be kicking to a pair of tailbacks. Doug Dubos, number 22, and Keith Jones, number six. They're both flyers, but with the wind at his back, uh, Derek Schmidt has knocked the football well beyond the playing field, and here's the way Nebraska starts. Uh, Travis Turner will be the senior quarterback for them. He has the edge and experience over the others. Tom Rathman, another senior, will be at fullback. Doug DuBose is the junior, 190-pounder. He's at highback or tailback. Roger Lindstrom is the wingback, and they run a lot of wingback counters on this team. Rob Schnitzler is a smallish sort of a fellow, 5'9", 170, but a very dangerous wide receiver. And here's the first snap of the ball game for the red-shirted Cornhuskers. It goes to DeBoat, the man in front of him. He can't split the corner, and he is thrown for a loss as Stanley Scheiber. A senior out of Fort Walton Beach jumps in there to make the hit. Todd Frayne, 230-pound tight end. Tim Roth, the tackle, is 275. Brian Blankenship at guard weighs 270. Bill Lewis at center, 6'6", 275. Stan Parker, 6'5", 245 at guard, and Tom Welter, 275-pound tackle. That's why Nebraska can control the football against you. They just lean on you, you get tired by the third quarter. It is second down and 12 for the Huskers as they lose two on the first play. Dubose pops this one out of there and goes across the 30 to the 33-yard line and a first down before the safety men, Shiver and Newell, can bring him down. Nebraska, very effective on the fullback up the middle. Fake to the fullback, and then off to Dubose. He makes a tremendous cut, breaking back out the back door. The weak side blocking is so important before the secondary brings him down. The ball is actually near the 34, where the Huskers have it first down in the first offensive series of the ball game. You've got Vaughn Shepard, the flank now way wide for the Huskers, and time is called by Nebraska. So it's the opening game, remember, and Travis Turner saw something he didn't like, and he calls time out to talk. Again, to reacquaint you with the weather conditions, the temperature 93 at game time, but much warmer down in the bottom of the big bowl on the artificial surface. It is first down and 10 Nebraska from their own 34 in the opening moments of the game. Quarterback Turner rides it, keeps it, turns up field to the 40. And he is brought down by Martin Mayhew, the left corner. Defensively for Florida State, Isaac Williams, Todd Stroud, Gerald Nichols, the three big guys down. The backers are Garth Jacks, Paul McGowan, Fred Jones, and Daryl Gray, and they're all quick. Not terribly big people, but very quick. And the secondary is very, very young. Number 37, Stanley Shiver, not 29. Newell, Williams, and Mayhew, the other players, are all young, but they are players. They're athletes, so they will grow even as the game goes on. Rathman, the fullback, wide open and long gone. It's touchdown, Nebraska! Rathman 
goes 55 yards for a touchdown, popping free over the right side. It was the aggressiveness of the Florida State defensive people coupled with the good solid blocking of the Nebraska people, and Rathman had to cakewalk home. And here's the kick for the point. It is good by Dale Klein, a sophomore from Seward. Chief Tom Rat Rathman is more than just a blocker for the tailback. He has about 4'6 speed. He's averaged over five yards at attempt for three years as fullback. He's a breakaway threat, something that very few I formation teams have. Tremendous blocking by Parker, the off guard who pulled and trapped the linebacker. The safety men try to come to the inside. A good block by the tight end. Pretty Rathman good block just, by the umpire, too. Yeah, the umpire <laughs> did screen him out a little bit. But Rathman shows the running ability of a fullback to go with the all Big eight tailback to Dubo, so this is something that Nebraska fans are glad to see. A fullback popping up the middle. Here's the block right here number, on number 32, Mayhew, by number 80, Frame, the tight end. He's the one on the fullback trap that releases right down the field to block the safety, giving the fullback a chance to split those safety men in for the touchdown. It's a 55-yard play. Nebraska goes to the lead 7-0 at 13 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. And now Dale Klein will kick off. The deep people for Florida State, number 44, Chuck Wells. He's the man in the middle, the one they'd like to have it. Curtis Thomas flanks him. And looks like Herb Gaynor would be the other man. High hanging kick, and it goes to Wells right on the five-yard line. Comes up the middle, and he's sandwiched at the 20, momentum to the 22. Here's your unit now, offensively for Florida State. Danny McManus, the sophomore from Hollywood. Big game against Tulane. Cletus Jones is a fullback, and he's another very good fullback. Chuck Wells will open at the tailback position, a sophomore. He's a 205-pounder. Herb Gaynor's a wide receiver. He's 185 pounds. Darren Holloman, a little guy, 5'7", 170. But he can fly. So the first snap now for Florida State. Ball beyond the 21. They trail 7-0. Let's see if they go to the air early. No, they go to the tailback. Hands the ball off. On a reverse to Darren Holloman. Holloman, the little man, is tripped up at the 26. Falls to the 27. If they don't get him, number 74 doesn't get a big hand out there and knock him down, then he might be long gone. Pablo Lopez, 270-pound tackle. Thomas Hart is a 280-pound guard. David Shrinker, 250 pounds of center. Jamie Dukes, one of the best at his position, 280. John Ayanata, 280. And Pat Carter, the tight end, 6'4 and 255. Good athlete, big target. The Huskers striking quickly to take the lead in the ball game. It is second down and four for Florida State. McManus is back to throw the ball. Gets it off deep. Throwing long downfield. And the pass is incomplete. Throwing the ball for Phil Bryant. A freshman red shirt from Bainbridge, Georgia. And Cleo Miller was running with him all the way and knocked it down. Defensively for Nebraska, they line up with Brad Smith, Chris Buckman, Danny Noonan, Jim Scow, and Greg Reeves. The inside, by, well, there's two linebackers in their defensive alignment, a 52 with Mike Knox and Mark Munford. And the secondary is Dennis Watkins, uh, Brian Washington, Brian Siebler, and Cleo Miller, the man who just made that last play, a junior college transfer out of Dallas, Texas. He, Florida State, went right after that junior college transfer, and he played it beautifully. Tough play, and he did it. Third and four. McManus hands it off inside to Tony Smith, who has come into the ball game at the tailback position, and Tony Smith, who was uh, disciplined last week and didn't play in the ball game against Tulane. They didn't need him. Uh, he pops it in there and picks up a first down for the Seminoles. Auburn with a big win. Bo Jackson a big day to start his Heisman march. And Auburn hopes their march to the SEC title. And the Trojans of USC handling the Finding Illini's passing offense. Shutting them out. And Penn State in the fourth quarter, a two-point lead over Maryland, 20-18. to Wells and Smith now in the backfield as Wells moves up into the fullback position and Tony Smith will be considered the tailback on first down from the 32. McManus, again, that little slip. They don't hand the ball directly on that particular play. It gives all the appearance that uh, McManus is going back to pass that he flips the ball off to Chuck Wells, but Jim Scow, big defensive tackle, ate him up. Keep the team using the shovel pass in place of the fake pass and run. I feel like that it, it has a better pull and draw on the defensive lineman rushing. 
as Tom Rathman, who just scored on a 55-yard touchdown run. I think we're going to see more and more of the shovel pass throughout the college season. Second down and 10. Ball is at the 32. McManus goes underneath with it. Pass is complete to Holloman. And the sophomore from Tallahassee is exciting. He's got a first down on the 48-yard line. Holloman, Holloman is a little wide receiver, only 5'6", as Keith Mitch is coming inside and uh, going underneath the linebacker coverage. And the linebacker, number, number 84, uh, Reeves, tried to hit him with that elbow instead of covering him. And you, uh, obviously, Holloman comes underneath, picks up a blocker from the other side, and finally they knock him out of bounds after a first down. Cletus Jones is in the ball game now at fullback. Running play goes to the eye back or the tail back. And look at this. Tony Smith gets that run. Not done often against Nebraska, but he turned the corner on him with a tremendous block from Cletus Jones. And he's down around the 37-yard line. Watch 84. Reeves throw his left elbow right at Holloman in his face. This is the play before for the pass, and he throws it right in the face, hits him, knocks him back right there. That's 15 yard penalty, and maybe uh, dismissed from the game. If you get caught. If you get caught. First down for the Seminoles as they are trying to respond now to Nebraska's first defensive possession, which Rathman kept off with a 55 yard dash for a touchdown. They rest now at the 37 of the Huskers and a first down. And Smith. He's still in there. That's the tailback with Cletus Jones in front of him, and Smith has the ball. And he ball moves down to just inside the 34. So that's a pickup of about three. Florida State fans have to be pleased with the performance of McManus, the quarterback, just a sophomore, 14 out of 19 last week. Bob Bowden to told me last night he's changed his offense. He's gone back to drop back passing. A few option plays as a nuisance, but mostly drop back passing, which I think has the best chance of working and being successful against Nebraska. Well, that's a big win for Penn State and a tough loss for Maryland. 20 to 18, the final score. And Tim Brandt is heartbroken. Ball goes to Tony Smith, and Smith head down, squared shoulders and legs churning. And he's to about the 28. He's going to be a yard short of his first down. Nebraska defense last year, as we look at the fake pass and run, take the ball back as if you're going to pass. The ball, ball carrier Smith finds daylight. There's no designed hole anywhere he can see an opening. But this Nebraska defense was first in the nation against scoring, first in total defense. They graduated nine seniors, only have two starters returning. Florida State offensive front getting off the ball well, getting a good surge. It is third down and one. Pullback, Cletus Jones banging into the middle. And he's a strong young man. Goes down to the 26-yard line, and he's going to have a first down. Bobby Bowden, Keith, uh, I think we've talked about this, is one of the most innovative, imaginative coaches we have in college football. The reason is simple. He has an offense that keeps the defense off balance. He'll run and he'll throw equally effectively. And that is, I think, the key to moving the ball on a consistent basis. They've mixed up their plays beautifully, Keith. They're passing on first down, running on first down, fake pass and run. Well, I, I think uh, one of the things that Bobby's doing is I, I particularly like in the circumstance, he's just absolutely ignoring the fact that his people are so young. <laughs> that's correct. That quarterback makes a big difference if he can execute. That's the critical variable. The ball is pitched back to Tony Smith, having trouble finding some daylight, and he won't find any. If he survives that crunch, there were four red shirts that rode him out. Tony Holloway was the key there, number 91. Just couldn't do much to turn that corner. There's no room. No, here's the score. Boston College defeating Temple, bouncing back from their loss to Brigham Young two weeks ago. Temple Owls are talking uh, about big things, too. Their, their program is coming along. A tough opener for Howard Schnellenberger at Louisville. Don Nealon's got one of the better teams in the country, I expect. Has one of the best programs here. And I, I think that we can look for West Virginia to be up at the summit high rank every year. Second down now and 13. Roughly a loss of about three on the last play. Ball is bad pass by McManus. No, they Run haven't. The lateral, he threw it forward. The ball was uh, was going forward just barely. He, he, you, he you just teach simply threw it too soon. You teach both teams to fall on it immediately anyway. Just in case it is a lateral, go on after it. And I'm surprised the defense of Nebraska didn't fall on it just in case. The, the, the forward pass part of the ball has to go forward. 
either parallel or forward is a forward pass. Has to go That's backwards down. if it's a lateral. That angle doesn't make doesn't help us any at all. From where we're sitting, you can clearly see it. Here's the Keith, this is the first long yardage that Florida State has been in on this drive. See what McManus can do against Well, they had to play call there. They had all kinds yeah. of daylight on that play. Could have been a touchdown. just didn't throw it Could at have been the right time. Here's the blitz. Third and 13. That's a good pass, and it's complete to Chuck Wells, and Chuck Wells has the marker square in his vision, and he went one foot, patched it, and got a first down. McManus, the quarterback from Florida State, has a snap release, Keith. A, the advantage of this, the defense has no warning where or when he's going to throw the ball. Let's see if we can't detect number 14. Watch how quickly he gets rid of the ball. Boom, it's on the way, right out in the flat. Wells has it. Good block downfield by the wide receiver. First down. At the 15-yard line of Nebraska. Converted that long and third and long, Keith. That's the key. Tony Smith is the deep man. Davis Jones, the up man. McManus gives to Smith. Smith fumbles. The football falls on it just short of the 15. Firing in. There was a blitzing uh, linebacker, I think it was. And, uh, probably Munford. I couldn't. I didn't get his number, but a red shirt came flying in and made contact with Smith, and he coughed it up for a moment. Here's Bobby Bowden one of the true gentlemen and great coaches that we have. What a job he's done at Florida State since he came there 10 years ago. Ball is just short of the 15. Lost a half a yard on the play. And Chuck Wells comes back in to play at tailback. Second down and 10. Nebraska lead 7-0. McManus spinning around. Bumped by his fullback. Holloman wide open. Touchdown. Keith Siebler, the safety man, was faked completely out of the play. Number 19 went wide with the look of the eyes or the head of McManus. Almost didn't happen, though. Watch this. Came close to a fumble, faking to the fullback, and fullback Jones ran into McManus, the quarterback. He regains his balance, looks wide, and turns and throws inside the Holloman. Siebler, you can see, is on the ground, number 19, at the bottom of your picture. He was a safety man that should have made the play. And the point is good by Derek Smith out of the hole of Kurt Cooper. So, we've got something cooking in Lincoln. With 8-11 to go in the first quarter, we're even at 7-7. A 7-7 tie in the first quarter with 8-11 to go, and Florida State with a tremendous confidence builder. They didn't look all that great, but they got it in the end zone, and it's even, and they'll kick off now to Keith Jones and Doug DuBose. Wind is at Schmidt's back as he kicks. Keith, it's going to be exciting if either Dubos or Jones. Jones is the fastest up to ever. It's Dubos well in the end zone. He's coming. Got a wedge. Takes a lift to the head. Shakes it off. Keeps on going. Not across the 30-yard line. He took a whack upside the head. I thought that would probably deck him. He <laughs> just kept right on rolling. Let's isolate on the touchdown to Holloman. When you get close, when a team gets close to the goal line, cross your receivers. Inside man, go out. Inside man comes to the, to, towards the go goal post, and you have a chance of a mistake. That's what happened with Nebraska. They confused their assignments, missed on the exchange of the crisscross. Holloman scores. And it's first down Huskers in a 7-7 ball game just outside their 32-yard line. Dubos. Hole over the right side, butts head, gets to 38. Pretty good look laid on him by Martin Mayhew, the sophomore from Tallahassee. But DuBose is deceptive. He's 5'11". He's a junior out of Connecticut. And he weighs 190 pounds. He doesn't look that big when you just look at him, but he will lay a lick on you. He was at the starter for Nebraska, but he made all big eight and led the big eight in rushing, coming off as a relief runner for Smith. Second down, four and a half. Rathman, Turner, Turner keeps, maybe a yard. Long run by the quarterback, Travis Turner, as he bellied with the fullback, uh, at least a full stride. That's like the old uh, belly series Bobby Dodd used to run. Here's the first scoring drive, Keith. Dubos minus two, 15, six, and 55, four plays. That was outstanding. Your first drive of the season has to be a conference builder for the offensive line in Nebraska, which has been rebuilt all the way across. Not a starter returning in that offensive line. Third down and three. 
26-22. One option again. Turner keeping and dives for the marker, and he's close. I think that'll get the change on the field. Let's join Tim Brandt. All right, Keith, if you look at this thermometer, you will see that the temperature now is 132 degrees. It's been sitting on the turf, a little bit cooler up around shoulder length. This is the hottest game day in Nebraska history since they've been keeping records in the early 1960s. One key note, Nebraska dressed 117 players. Florida State has only 66 dressed. That could be a factor as they get on in the fourth quarter. Well, you know they're not going to play 117 <laughs> no. unless it turns into an utter rout, and I don't think that's going to happen, but they're liable. Nebraska's liable to play 60. They will play at least 60. It was a first down, and the thing that I like about Travis Turner, the quarterback at Nebraska, he calls his own number on third down. The good quarterbacks like to take that responsibility on third down and make it themselves. Turner just accomplished that. And the ball rests just short of the 43 on the Nebraska side of the field. This is DuBose. DuBose has that uh, remarkable faculty that good running backs all seem to have. The first man in hits him, he bounces outside. He bounces outside. And every time he bounces, he picks up another yard. Keith, and to add to that, the great runners, the thing that sets them apart, the ones that have good eyes. And DuBose must be able to see in all directions at the same time because he seems to find the daylight. Again, he's out just beyond the 46. About four-yard pickup, second down and six for the Huskers. 25, Turner back. His pass is away. Short pass goes to Rob Schnitzler, the split end. And Rob is thrown out a yard and a half or maybe two yards short of marker for the third down and two coming up. A little bit of a surprise call by Tom Osborne. With a second down and uh, even yardage, he went to a short pass, giving him third and one, a third and two. But I think he wanted to build Travis Turner's confidence. He, Travis Turner had an injury in, in the spring practice and just recovered. Third to short two. Dubose over the left side, spins in there and gets his first down. It's down close to the 45. Another point on it, Tom Osborne is his own offensive man. In other words, he calls the offensive plays. So the time is saved in trying to make a decision uh, with a, another person involved in the decision-making process. Keith, that is so important uh, when, particularly in a tight ball game or right before the half. Here's what Bo Jackson did Keith, at tailback. Now, we must remember he's playing the I-formation tailback instead of the wishbone. This is senior year. And it was Simpson S. The performance, 23 carries. Turner, wigwags it a little bit inside, gives to Vaughn Shepard as Shepard tries to reverse it, and they lose two yards on the play. And coming in to make the tackle is the linebacker playing inside, Paul McGowan. Paul McGowan, number 38, just a sophomore for Florida State, but the coaches say he's going to be one of their best ever. He has a great knack and instinct of going where the ball, and he wasn't fooled at all on that reverse play. This is a typical Nebraska march, just crunching along. Right now, they're looking at second and 12. Here's the blitz. And Turner tries to beat it, but he tried to beat it with the wrong play. He had the wrong play call for a blitz. He had a little bit of a delay with Dubose, and uh, uh, when the other folks are blitzing, it's the wrong time to be trying to run a delay. And the reason Keith uh, points that out, the defense had crossed the line before uh, the draw play has time to affect on the blitz. Southern Cal must be strong. They are strong. They are indeed. Third and long yards. This is the first time for Turner in third and long situation. Goes down the middle with it, a fine defensive play by number 17, Eric Williams, the right cornerback, coming across in front of Roger Lindstrom. Had uh, Turner led Lindstrom just a little more, I think he'd uh, had his play. And but. maybe a touchdown, yep. Keith. Crossing pattern on man for man. Man for man accompanies the blitz, and you can see that Williams was beaten on the play. Lindstrom was way out in front of him. As Keith had properly pointed out, the ball was thrown a little bit behind him. Number 17, Williams, sophomore last year. Four interception makes a great save there. Otherwise, I believe it would have been a touchdown. Here's some excitement now. Dan, Dan Wingard is in to punt. Deion Sanders, a freshman, back to receive it. Let's see how the freshman handles it. He's going to let it hit the ground. And it goes into the end zone. 
Well, he made the right decision by a breath, just barely, because Nebraska had the ball but couldn't stop it inside the five. Turns out to be a 48-yard punt. Florida State opened the fall training looking for a quarterback, and it looks like Bobby Bowden's found him. Danny McManus's first start for us, a sophomore, redshirt sophomore, played well, and uh, if he can continue to progress, I think we've got a mighty good one coming along. I uh, hope so he improves as much between the first and second game as they say. He accounted for four touchdowns in the 38 to 12 win against Tulane. He pitched that ball to Tony Smith, and Smith gets a couple of yards on the carry. Bobby Bowden is a master at mixing up the run and pass, Keith, on that 14 play touchdown drive of 79 yards. He had eight rushes and six passes, and that kept the Nebraska defense spread and off balance. They couldn't concentrate on any one thing. That's key. You've got to spread them out. Yes, sir. They're too good if you let them bunch in and play against you. Inside. And Florida State goes double wide. Phillip Bryant to the bottom of the picture. McManus gives the ball to the tailback. And Smith running hard. He apparently was stung a little bit by the discipline imposed on him last week. And he's moved the football out near the 29. They'll be looking at third and one. Next week, we've got a choice for you. BYU versus Washington in Pro Bowl or UCLA and Tennessee in Knoxville. Check your local listing for the game in your area. And if you don't like the one that's in your area, pop a plane and go see them. <laughs> Just jump in the old private jet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how we could bring you two better ones. Third down and two. Little pop pass is incomplete. Might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. I think maybe that ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Here's Jim Lampley. Keith, here are the pertinent details on Penn State's 21st victory in a row over the Maryland Terrapins. With less than a minute to go in the football game, Maryland moved the football into possible field goal territory. But as tailback Alvin Blount caught a pass from Gelbaugh and picked up a first down, he was hit by Lance Hambledon, fumbled the ball away to Trey Bauer. That preserved the Penn State victory. Back to Keith. Thank you, Jimmy. All the young guys are in the air-conditioned studio and us older folks right here in this heat. Here's a high kick. And the ball bounces straight out of bounds. And so Lewis Berry does his job. He didn't hit it full well, but he sure did get a lot out of a 39-yard punt. Nebraska and Florida State, all even at 7-7. Seven and seven. Nebraska took the opening kickoff, marched it downfield. Tom Rathman, the fullback, 56-yard touchdown run. Florida State came right back and stuck it in the end zone on a pass from McManus to Holloman. 15 yards, and that's where we are. All even, 7-7. Seven, seven. This is Nebraska's third offensive possession of the ball game. They go to Rathman, the fullback, pounds it up the middle for about three yards. The temperature when we started the game was 93 degrees. Very hot. Fred Jones, number 55, the linebacker, reads this play beautifully. The half, this play Hathman scored on first time, uh, the, on the first possession. Jones fills the hole this time, stopping Rathman before he has a chance to get started. That's a good play, good read by the linebacker, Jones. Fred, key man in the defensive structure of Florida State. Very big, 242, big for linebackers in Florida State. He has a four-yard gain there, and the right side of the Nebraska line uh, takes off. Ken Kalen is in the fullback now as Rathman comes out for a rest. And looked like it was Tom Welter, or no, it was Ron Rob Maggard, maybe, that took off too soon. The referee is John McClinop and the rest of his colleagues. You talk about all this... The heat, the problems, 130 degrees and plus down on the field for the players. How about the guys wearing a striped shirt? Keith, they do a great job. And you and I are discussing about the mechanics of this new uh, seventh man official crew like they have across the country today. A dead ball. Ball start on the offense. It is still second down. Not just knowing the rules, but the mechanics of where to be at the right time and how to help each other out, how to hustle. Takes a lot of work. These men do a great job in service to the game of football. I was down on that field for about a half an hour before the game. I thought my feet were blistered. <laughs> 140 degrees, they will if you take your shoes off. Boy, Turner yeah. sidearms it and come no good. Ball bounced to Rod Smith. Short hopped it. Travis Turner throwing on the run. Wheel that one from the hip. Florida State defense strategy will be to force Travis Turner to throw all the way to the boundary. He's not known for a passer. He's more of a leader, big, tough, young, quarter, strong quarterback. He has to throw the ball all the way across the field. That's a difficult throw. It's open. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage because the defense do not want to put two men out on that type of pass because of the difficulty of completing it. 
It is now third down and almost 12 after the motion on uh, after the penalty. 22, 22. Turner keeps, gets pressure behind the line of scrimmage, and the Seminoles beat him up behind the line. And there's a loss on that play to bring up fourth down. And the Huskers now are going to have to go to the putt. And the Florida State defensive unit looked very good in that series. Good, good possession for Florida State. They stopped the sweep. They stopped up the middle and a pass. Did a good job forcing the kick and should have good field position. Florida State defense has been the line the last two or three years, Keith. Last year, Auburn got 42. Arizona State got 44. South Carolina got 38 points on it. They're trying to regroup. The stomach gets a little tight, though, when you got a teenager <laughs> freshman back there to accept oh, the punt. I, I've never had to do that, Keith. I, I'd rather have someone who couldn't run it than the Good kick by Winger. Go with Andy. that. Oh, it's a good one. And Sanders trying to run away from the pressure. Get some help on the corner. Well, I think you can quit worrying. That kid's got some gizzard. He brings that ball back out beyond the 30-yard line, a 41-yard punt. And he ran a long way through a lot of traffic to get four yards on the return. Just a true freshman. Played in high school last year. Very talented young man. In fact, the coaches say as a defensive back, he's going to be a great one before he graduates. Now the Flor Nebraska defense, Keith, which has only blitzed one time in this ball game on the third and one last time. And the pass was deflected incomplete. Let's see what they decide to do now. Quite a struggle in the U.S. Open. With McEnroe finally winning in five sets. First down, from the 31, McManus fakes it, fakes it, open. goes wide open, Holloman, and he overthrew it. Holy smokes, he had six points. Darren Holloman was six yards in the clear. Oh, when the safety man bites on a quick pass, watch out. Bobby Bowden will teach him a lesson. McManus will fake to the Holloman on the slant and then reload, and Holloman breaks deep, and look why wide open he is. The reason he's wide open, the safety man bit on the fake. Safety man protects deep and tackles on the short pass. McManus is biting his fingers oh, off and blowing that opportunity. Ball goes to Smith. Oh, my goodness, he got around the corner. And there's a penalty flag. You might get a little bit of a hole here. Number 64 got tangled up out there with somebody, Jamie Dukes. And uh, the official was standing right there, and he... Plunked him with the flag. Jamie Dukes, number 64, may be one of the best offensive guards in America. Has a unique distinction of starting every game at Florida State. First one in his freshman year right through the day. Tough break for Florida State. They were going to have third and short. Instead, it's going to be second down and long. I'm a little surprised uh, in the times that they've tried it now. The Seminoles are able to get around that corner. Keep what's happened. I I'm surprised, too. But what's happened, the ball carrier had the wisdom to fake inside. Nebraska had played it perfectly. Nebraska reacted to the fake inside. And then Smith had the speed to come back out and beat the defenders to the corner. Jamie Dukes had the speed and size to go <laughs> out there and take three Huskers down. Well, he's lost 20 pounds. Keep Holding it. on the offense. It'll still be second down. From 298 to 278. And that's back, too. <laughs> Ball comes back to the 23-yard line of Florida State. They've got to go to the 41 to get their first. This situation, Nebraska usually blitzes, but not against a team maybe like Florida State that is so effective at handling the blitz, blitz package. Pass to Smith out of the backfield, 40, up to the 43. First down for the Seminoles. They what? spread him out, and McManus that time picked the right man. The reason that he picked the right man, the, the linebackers follow Holloman across the middle and leave a wide open area. Look at the area. The linebacker normally would have dropped back in that area, but he took Holloman across the middle, and McManus, that looked very simple, Keith, is not, believe me, to read it, block it, and hit the right man. Ryan Washington, strong safety, made the tackle. Chuck Wells is back into the game now for Florida State. And Smith is out. And McManus throws to the sidelines to Holloman. Little guy bounces around and gets loose and picks up another first down. He went around Dennis Watkins, the corner, and got the first down. I tell you, he's dynamite. He is quick. He's like a water bug. One thing that was so impressive on that play, Keith, is that Manus got the ball to Holloman in time for him to regain his balance 
before Watkins was in position to tackle. This gave Holloman advantage to give him a little dip and duck and move and get around. Holloman's caught three now for 47 yards and a touchdown. The ball is at the Nebraska 46 where it's first down for the Seminole. They show blitz. And McManus unloads in a hurry, throws it behind Holloman. But for the sake of his future as a quarterback, he got rid of it in a hurry. Well, the quarterbacks today make what we call a side adjustment. As soon as they see the blitz, they forget the play called in the huddle. They backpedal where they can see the defense coming and which receiver might be open. And McManus just threw a little bit behind Holloman or he'd have made another big game. Scow was the man putting the heat on. Big Jim, 250 out of Omaha, number 96. Second down and 10. The Packers drop out of there this time and they give it to Tony Smith and Chuck Wells. Chuck Wells. Gets inside the 40 near the 39. So they'll need just about three, three and a half yards on this play. There's out. That was a shovel pass, Keith, and that counts as a completion for the quarterback. That'll, that'll help you average a lot. Uh, but the, the teams are using this instead of the fake pass and run. Well, Jack Curtis showed us the shovel pass an awful long time ago, but eventually all things come down. Okay. Run in a circle. After 15 minutes in the... First quarter, it is a 7-7 ball game, and Florida State now will go to the attack just inside the Nebraska 40-yard line, and they need third down and about four yards. In the first quarter, Florida State used 52 players and Nebraska 48, so both coaches getting them in and out. McManus on third and four. Gets it away, pass is caught by Carter to tight end, and the big guy falls forward and picks up the first down. The sophomore from Sarasota, 6'4 and 255. That was the first play that we had with McManus really in trouble and seeing his reaction, how he would react under the circumstances of Nebraska having a whole lot. Will he throw it for an interception? No. Young man has tremendous poise. He sidesteps the, the rusher and hits Carter, the big tight end. And Carter fights his way, 255 pounds, and falls for the first down. They had Chad Dapper in the ball game. He made the tackle. He's the backer that comes in in their pass defense. He's the quicker of the four linebackers for Nebraska, but Chad couldn't knock it down. And McManus straight back, goes down the middle, wide open. 87, Galen White. Inside the five, first and goal, Florida State. Nebraska took their safety men and moved them out wide. They had no one in the middle. And the tight end is going to go right down the middle. White, number 87. You can see that, that uh, McManus gets the ball. Look how wide open he is. That's got to be a bust. See, but the safety man was too wide. The other safety man too wide to the opposite side of the field, leaving way too much area. But the key is McManus hit it, Keith, while he was open. Didn't hold the ball too long. Give the safety man a chance to get back in position. Ball is put down precisely on the five. Danny McManus has called a timeout. He's got a great opportunity. He doesn't want to mess it up. So he'll come to the sideline and talk to his coaches. A 7-7 ball game, but that may change shortly. Quiet. Danny McManus in this ball game early in the second quarter. Nine out of 14 for 126 yards and a touchdown. He's got the ball first and goal at the Nebraska five. In the backfield, number 48, David Palmer, and number 49, Tony Smith, and Smith is the deep man. Smith with the ball. Touch it right. Nothing doing. Siegler this time reads the play, penetrates, and brings him down. Each coach has a personality, a style, and Florida State mixing up the running and passing had the advantage in the first quarter. 124 yards total. Look at the overbalance of run against the pass for Nebraska. Will that come to haunt Nebraska later in this ball game? The ineffective ability to throw. If I look for a change at quarterback, I think we'll see Clayton in this second quarter very quickly for Nebraska. A loss of about two yards on that previous play, and now Nebraska has called a timeout. That stops the clock at 13.40 to go in the second quarter. And Florida State owns the ball just inside the Huskers' seven. Again, here's Jim. Five seconds. Here's the latest on the Pete Rose situation. He walked in his last at bat at Wrigley Field today, wound up the day 0 for 4. The Reds play the Cubs again tomorrow in Chicago. Scheduled starter for the Cubs, left-hander Steve Trout, often against left-handers Tony Perez. 
subs for Rose at first base for the Reds. Final score in today's game, 9-7 in favor of the Cubs, despite two Dave Parker home runs. We will interrupt programming when Pete Rose gathers the tying and record-breaking hits, 4,191 and 4,192. Monday night, the Reds are at home against San Diego in Cincinnati. Now back to Keith Jackson and Lincoln. Thank you, Jerry. I imagine Pete probably will be relieved when that is finally accomplished. And go back to trying to win games, which is his primary purpose anyway. Done quite a job, though, as a yeah. player manager for yes, the Reds has. this year. Yes, he has. Long yardage, a passing situation, Keith, or some kind of trick play for Florida State. This will go in the books as a six-yard play. The ball is just short of the six. Second down and goal. McManus gives it to Smith, dives it up the middle, and... Uh, there was no daylight. He just had to go on over the top because he was committed, and he gets it down to about the three. Florida State ran the fake pass and run, trying to get a hold in that line, split two men and score. But Smith has looked good. He didn't play last week as he was disciplined. We've already mentioned that, but he has looked good. He's nine for 26, but he's run some tough yardage. Well, the reason that didn't work was Newton and Scow just <laughs> simply didn't give any ground. Well, they did not bite. Roll out passes about the four yard line. Holloman, and it is incomplete and almost intercepted by Mike Carl. Mike Carl, number 42, a junior out of Gretna, has his hands on this ball. Now Holloman falls down, and that takes away the impact of the play. That ruins the timing of the play as he tried to make his cut. And Carl, number 42, makes a tremendous break on the ball. He has to decide, Keith, right there. Does he go for the interception, or does he just try to knock the ball down? Judgment was go for the interception, and he came close to pulling it off. 20-yard field goal try coming up now by Derek Smith. He was the leading scorer in the nation as a freshman last year. And he nails it way up into the sea of red, and it's good. And Florida State takes the lead in the ball game for the first time. Nebraska gets tougher in that close quarters. They can't put it in for six, but they take three. Blue sky behind the old, I guess that's the Capitol building, isn't it? Can't tell yes, that's it the Capitol building. I walked by there this morning. It's beautiful. 10-7, Florida State Seminoles lead. The Nebraska Cornhuskers and this sellout crowd has been very quiet. Well, one thing a visiting team wants to do is score first, take the crowd out of it. Florida State has taken the lead and taken the crowd out of it. They will be kicking off the end of the win. It should give Nebraska a pretty good field position. The Seminoles have run 27 plays with 12.52 to go in the first half to 16 for Nebraska. Schmidt will kick off, and it's Jones and Dubos that eat people. Could be very exciting. Ball gets up, and he really hammered that thing. It's four yards uh, deep in the end zone, and DuBose reverses the ball. Carrying it is Vaughn Shepard. And Shepard's got some room on the sideline. But finally hold down at the 30. A little razzle-dazzle. Uh, brought the crowd back into the ball game and gave them good field position. You can hand the ball off on a kickoff if you hand it backwards. And so DuBose... But Dubose handed to Shepard behind him, and Shepard shows his speed by circling the, the uh, coverers, comes close. That's the last man. No one, one coming close to the play. Good Put point. it on the 31-yard line, and McCatherine Clayton, the sophomore from Orlando, Florida, is in there very quickly. Hands the ball off. And a loss of about a uh, yard on the play. Let's join Tim Brent. Keith, the trainers on both sides of the field are working feverishly, trying to keep the fluids into these players. As they come off, they're giving them ice, they're giving them plenty of water. Now, on the field, right now, it is 130 degrees directly on the turf. The temperature, air temperature up here on shoulder level is about 94 degrees. But the key is the humidity is low, and that's usually the energy sapper. There has been no ill effects, no cramps thus far, but the heat will be a factor as this game goes on. No loss on the previous play. Second down and 10. Clayton keeps the ball. Here's where he's so valuable. And he's right at the marker for a first down. Clayton is the young man that was redshirted last year, number seven. He's from Florida with a great reputation as a runner and passer. 
And on that last play, we saw the speed that he has. He just accelerated right out into the open area and made a nice gain. Otherwise, it would have been no gain. He has no experience. This is his first series in a varsity game. He played on the freshman team, Keith, and then redshirted last year. He's very close to his first down. Apparently, it's short. Looks, uh, no, I guess not. Yeah, they bring that. It's about two inches, Keith. Yeah, was it? Yeah. I thought for a minute they were going to go ahead and mark it on downfield, but apparently it's just a couple of inches short. There's no substitute for speed at quarterback. If the quarterback can run, it puts a new dimension in the offense where the defense has to start accounting for him along with Dubos, along with Rathman, and the passing game, and it just eliminates a lot of things that they'd like to do. Ball is right on the 41-yard hash mark. Sammy Smith. Warming up, and I think we'll see him in the next Florida State Series. He's their talented freshman tailback. Right now, it's Nebraska. Third and about two inches, and Clayton hands the ball to the big guy, Rathman, and the fullback booms in there and picks up the first down. Again, we join Jim Lampley in New York. Early in the fourth quarter at Champaign, Illinois, the Illini are attempting to mount a comeback against Southern Cal. Just moments ago, they drove to the shadow of the Trojan goal line and had to settle for a 28-yard field goal by Chris White. Trudeau now throwing the ball very well, though earlier in the game, Junior Thurman, Southern Cal defensive back and brother of former pro defensive back Dennis Thurman, picked off two Trudeau passes. So Thurman with two key interceptions, the Trojans still leading 20-10. to 10. Back to Keith Jackson. He did not get the first down here. It is fourth down and uh, three, four inches, and Nebraska's going for it. Rathman did not get it. This time they give it to DuBose, and he breaks it big. Goes to midfield and across it. Nebraska used a new formation. Florida State did not make the adjustment. Unbalanced line to the right, an extra blocker. You can see that the Florida State defense will wipe off the extra blocker, free. Dubose into the secondary for the big game and came close to making the long game. Yeah, but how about the call? The ball is on your own 41-yard line. It's fourth down. You've just missed with your big fullback, and Osborne said, go get it, and they did. First down just over midfield. Ball goes to Rethman, and Rethman wrestles down close to the 46 in the arms of Isaac Williams, defensive left tackle. Isaac Williams, junior tackle, the fast, number 45, the fastest lineman that Florida State has. Let's see the technique he uses. In, in sequence, he should whip the blocker, find the ball carrier, shed the blocker, make the tackle. That's what he does. Ken Kalen comes in at fullback. We're leaving uh, Rathman now for the uh, Cornhuskers on second down and about seven. And Clayton coming down the line on the option. Keeps it. He's loose. He's gone. All the way inside the five. Run down by Deion Sanders. Keith official missed a penalty. Landstrom is, is running on motion, and he's going towards the line of scrimmage. Watch number 23 be going towards the line of scrimmage when the play is snapped, but the official didn't see it, and we see the tremendous ability, the quickness, the speed of this young quarterback, just a sophomore. Much hair, look at him, turn it on. Outruns the entire team finally, with exception of number two, well, you can tell the speed of Sanders. I'll and tell he you that. He ran him down. Yes. He came from across 15 the yards across the field. It's first down and goal. Inside goes Rutman, the fullback to about the one-yard line. Let's look. The man in motion, less from the wing back, has to be going parallel to number 23, parallel to the line of scrimmage. It looked to me like he turned in just a little bit with his head before the ball was snapped. But the officials thought it was too close. It was not a penalty. Too close to call. Second down and one. The ball is on the one. Second down and goal from the one. That's Rathman, is it? Or is it Taylor? Taylor goes. You know, I thought Clayton almost lost the ball in trying to hand it off. The penetration was so good by the Florida State defensive people. They almost messed up that play. McGowan and Fred Jones in the middle. This is Jones. Fred, Fred Jones has played every play on defense, has had no rest, comes across with great intensity, and gets involved in a play and actually stops Dubose from going across the goal line. In comes Dana Brinson now out of Valdosta, Georgia. A redshirt freshman for Nebraska. A wingback brings the play with him. It's Rathman at fullback and Dubose at tailback. 
And it's third and goal. And it's Westman over the top. They don't give it to him. If Rathman had, you know, Keith, we've talked about corkscrewing going over the top, I believe he'd have gone, uh, gone underneath and scored on the linebacker. But going across the top with his shoulders parallel the line of scrimmage that gives the linebackers a chance to get under you. Jones again made the play, coming over the top. Lineman, submarine. Linebackers come over the top and make the play. Both linebackers, McGowan 38, Jones 55, throw Rathman back. Fourth and goal and about six inches. Do both. Into the corner, touchdown. McEffin Clayton comes off on an option play, delivers the ball perfectly to DeBose, and DeBose goes in untouched to the corner, and the Cornhuskers are back into the lead. They're taking the lead again. This is an outstanding execution of the option play. This is not simple. You can see that a man was coming right into Clayton, and he pushed the ball out with his left hand. Perfect lateral. DuBose took it in for the touchdown. Line for the point. Bad snap. And no points. Dan Wingard, the punter, who does the holding, the snap came back on the ground to him. Wingard couldn't come up with it cleanly, and uh, Terry Robinson was in in a hurry. And there is no extra point. It's 13-10. Well, the crowd is back in the ball game now with the home team out in front, 13-10. Nebraska kicking off to Florida State, 8.05 to go in the first half. And the deep people, three of them back there for Florida State, Chuck Wells, Tanner Holloman, and Curtis Thomas. Here's the kickoff. High and long with the wind. Going way back. No return. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football premieres coming up this week, next Monday. Washington, Dallas. I don't need to tell you a whole lot about that series. I mean, the history has clearly defined it. Mike Gifford, O.J. Simpson, and Joe Namath joining the team this year. That's at 8 o'clock Eastern time, and they do it again on Thursday with the Los Angeles Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs. So a couple of NFL games for you coming up this week on ABC. Sammy Smith now is in the backfield for Florida State. Number 33, freshman out of Apopka, Florida, 6'1", 215. Did not have a big game in the opener. Didn't play a whole lot. They're bringing him on slowly. Pops it outside. Boom. Big running back. Played the shoulder into the defender and takes the football all the way out to the 43-yard line. Oh, that was a great run. What an impressive blocking at the line of scrimmage by the Florida State line. Smith is 225 pounds. He goes out the back door, but watch his stiff arm. Here he stiff arms, number 42, Mike Carl, and goes on past him before a host of Nebraska Huskers get him down. Call it the 43. McManus to throw it. Passes away to Carter, the tight end. First down on the Nebraska side of the field. And right now, it looks to me like McManus is just picking his spots in the Nebraska secondary. He's eating it up. Well, Nebraska secondary has been completely rebuilt from last year. As we look at Carter, number 85, the sophomore tight end. All four starters for Nebraska graduated. Although three of these players this year have played some football and one junior college player, uh, Miller, number 17, playing quarterback. Yeah, but they got to play Jack Trudeau in Illinois next week, too. Oh, is that some first half uh, young sophomore quarterback playing on the road in the in Lincoln? It's very impressive. This is Smith and Sammy Smith. Well, if you've got speed, that's fine. That's great. That's wonderful. But if you've got power and size to go with it, that's what legends can be made of. And this big kid just stuck his head in there and got uh, almost four yards. Toronto Blue Jays lose today in the American League East struggle. And uh, the Mets and Dodgers are at it today with the Mets out on top, 2 nothing in the fifth. The Yankees, I imagine, eyes getting pretty big. They can pick up a game on Toronto with a win. Second down and a short seven or a long six. McManus trying to throw the ball. Can't do it as the Huskers finally fight in and get it. Chris Spockman and Danny Noonan. Bachman 250 and Noonan 275. The initial time was there to throw the pass, but the 
secondary had all the receivers covered. Now Nebraska's doing some situation substituting on long yardage. One, two, three, four, five different people coming in to play the pass. The secondary covered the receivers, nowhere to go, sack. See, I would think one of those is probably Chad Dapper, linebacker number 46. Miller came in. No, nope, they got a nickel back in. Yes. It's third down and about 11. McManus goes underneath with it. The ball to White and the tight end bobbled it. Now it off his noggin and still caught it and fell down around the 40. That's White, the tight end who caught the touchdown. Or caught the uh, pass and set up the thing. Well, I guess they didn't score, did they? You wound up with a field goal. On it. In this particular sequence, the secondary of Nebraska is permissive for a time, and then all of a sudden, they got tough. They tightened up, Keith. They got, played them a lot close, played the receivers a lot closer. McManus had nowhere to go with the football. Five receivers were out, and they covered all five of them. Barry is in the punt. Lewis gets it away on the 49-yard line of Nebraska, hits a knuckleball to the sidelines, and it bounces straight back and goes out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. So again, Lewis Barry, the punter, does his job. Knocks it out on the seven. The Nebraska Cornhuskers leading Florida State 13 to 10 with 523 to play in the first half, and the Huskers come out with a ball at their own seven. The result of Barry's punt out of bounds. And Clayton is in there at quarterback. Dubose had gone all the way at the tailback position, and he's still out there at a penalty flag thrown into the line of scrimmage area as DuBose picks up about a yard or so. Paul McGowan made the tackle. That's the halftime schedule for you. Those you have not heard, Doug Flutie has joined the group in New York as a commentator. Keith, with the ball backed up, uh, Turner is going to come back in the ball game. More experienced quarterback, and that's not a bad, not a bad decision. Florida State has to decide whether to take the penalty or refuse it since it'll be second and 11. Holding on the offense. It's declined. It'll be second down. There's no point in taking a holding call there. You're not going to get enough out of it anyway. Better have it down. Well, the experienced quarterback, Turner, fifth-year senior, handling the ball on the own six-yard line. The boat's drifting around, finds daylight. And comes out to the 13. That is instinctive. You can't coach that kind of running. <laughs> he made a tremendous cut. Nothing there. All the blocking had uh, escaped. And then all of a sudden he cuts back and makes a nice game. Dubose is just outstanding with his moves and with his power. Tom Osmond in his 13th year, 81%. Second best of active coaches. Couldn't happen to a nicer person. Third down and uh, four and a half. And Travis Turner on a throw. Misses this man, throws to the tight end, Todd Crane. He had him, but he just didn't hit it. They would have taken a careful throw. Re receiver was being chased by a linebacker. Yeah, but that big frame was uh, he, turned square, and all he, Turner had to do was hit the numbers. If he hit him on the numbers, it would have been a first down. Turner number 14. Walk on quarterback five years ago. Finally got to start last year five times in the middle of the season. One, Nebraska won all five games. Wingard now for his third punt. And it's going to that flashy freshman, Deion Sanders, who can fly. Bad snap. Ball comes rolling back. And Wingard's got to run for his life and can't do it. He is nailed back at the six or seven yard line. A bad snap. That's the second one that Nebraska's had in the game. One of them, uh, the first one cost him an extra point, and this one may cost him a touchdown. The ball bounces at least twice. Wingard doesn't pick it up cleanly, or, well, he had his knee on the ground anyway, Keith. If he had the ball, he couldn't have kicked it because his knee was on the ground while he had possession. But he does all he can do at that time is try to gain what he can. A break for the special team. Here, let's see it again. You can see his right knee touching the ground. Should he get the ball? Really, it's dead right there. It's really, if the official had been alert, it's Florida State ball right there, Keith. But official, you know, we got a better view up here, maybe. Mark Cooper 
having his troubles with a snap. They go to Sammy Smith, a big freshman tailback, and Smith gains nothing. Of course, the first down on the one-yard line is a heck of a different than first down on the seven. Had the official recognize the knee on the ground was possession of the ball by the kicker. Mark Munford had come flying in to get a piece of Smith along with Brian Siebler to free safety. Mike Knox returning from a knee injury, a leg injury, is back in there as a starter at linebacker. Though Knox sometimes will come out in favor of Chad Dapper in passing circumstances. It's on the seven-yard line, second down and goal now for Florida State. Last time they were down there knocking on the door, they wound up with a field goal. Ball is handed to number 42, Cletus Jones, the fullback, and there's a penalty flag on the play as Jones finds his way to about the four. Well, they're going to call something between Holloman and the cornerback, number, nine, number 19, Siebler, over there scuffing a little bit, and I don't know who it's against. We'll just have to wait and see. Both of them, I don't know who initiated it. Dead ball foul. Dead ball foul, meaning that uh, they get a penalty in the down over two. What is paired? I'm not sure. Well, that wasn't a dead ball signal. I'm wrong. But it will be half the distance to the goal. Which amounts to about two yards. Well, a little more than, let's see, from the... Let's see, if they go back, Keith, it would be from the seven, be three and a half yards. Three and a half yards. Siebler was scuffing with Holloman. We had 12 men on the field. Oh, uh -oh. That's a proceeding spot penalty, half the distance. And we're going to replay the down. Well, I'll be darned. I wondered how Siebler was playing quarterback. He's normally a safety man. Well, men on the field. There have been some memorable circumstances. I can take you back to the Orange Bowl. I can take you to the Sugar Bowl. Yes, Penn State and Alabama. Yeah. Kansas and Penn State. Penn State was involved favorably with one in Orange Bowl and uh, worked against them in the game against Alabama for the national championship. Well, so the football goes to the two. And the big bonus here is they get to replay the down. Second down and goal from the two. The fullback hammers into the middle. Tumbles at the goal line. Florida State says we got it. And they do. Touchdown Seminole. The officials have not signaled such thing. Yes, yes, they did. did. Yeah, they did. Late. And it, actually, there's both the, the sideline officials were screened off. He, Jones goes right up the middle, and there's a, just a bunch of people in there. And neither official can tell whether he's crossed the goal line. There's no signal there except by the Florida State players until very late. And so the Seminoles now have surged back to the lead, going to the point. It hits it, it's good. We've got three minutes and 27 seconds to play in the half. Schmidt has never missed a point after. He's 49 out of 49, 17-13 state. Cletus Jones, the man who found just enough with his size and muscle to get it into the end zone and give the Seminoles a 17-13 lead. And uh, Nebraska opening game, it's showing. Keep with regard to the official calling the 12 men and studying those mechanics, one of the officials is responsible for counting the, the personnel on every down. It's the back judge, and he counted the 12 people. Didn't happen by accident. That's his assignment. That's part of the mechanics of the officiating. And you're right. There are mistakes by Nebraska, and I haven't seen them. Really, we haven't had a turnover or an intercepted pass of any, or a turnover of any kind with Florida State. They played near perfect football. There's about a 14 mile an hour wind whipping down through this big bowl, which is again very quiet as the Seminoles have gone back to the lead. You just saw the ball come rolling off the tee. If it blows off this time, they'll have to send somebody out there to hold it. Keith, this is, I tell you, for a first ball game, boys, I think it's a great performance by both teams imaginative and they can move the ball that's the key good high kickoff comes down to the six yard line to Keith Jones Keith Jones who is one of the fastest Huskers ever comes back to about the 23 Tim Brandt now 
Keith, Nebraska's kicking game has certainly hurt them thus far. It was a bad snap that missed the extra point. It was a bad snap that set up Florida State's touchdown on the punt. The reason for that is because Mark Cooper, the long snapper for Nebraska, is out of the ball game. He was hurt early. He got dinged on the head, didn't know where he was. They have kept him out. They have ice on his neck. They will check him at halftime to see if, in fact, he can come back in the second half. But with the snapper out, it has caused severe problems. Oh, I'm glad you clarified that because I had uh, named him a moment ago as a result of the snaps, and it is not Mark's fault. You know who's doing the snapping. Well, we'll just have to watch it next time and see who he, it is. Uh, Blankenship had snapped uh, two years ago. I'm not sure he was in there, but uh, he had snapped for, for the team two years ago before he was ineligible last year. Those are the two games we have for you next Saturday, BYU and Washington or UCLA and Tennessee. BYU is playing UCLA tonight, and the game next week will be Tennessee's opener. Johnny Major's opening with uh, some new people, proven quarterback, and a new defensive coordinator in Ken Donahue coming over from Alabama. Timeouts remaining, Nebraska with none now, and Florida State with two. The time remaining in the first half is 3.21. In penalties, Florida State's been flagged one time for 10 yards, Nebraska twice for a total of seven yards. And Southern California, the Trojans have defeated Illinois 20 to 10. Got out to a 17-0 lead and made it hold up. So that's the team most of the journalists picked out on the West Coast to win the Pac-10 this year. Keith, we've got Clayton back at quarterback, a rookie playing in his first college football, varsity football game. Three minutes on the clock, team trailing. Let's see what he can do coming from behind. Still got it, looking for a throw, doesn't get it, but gets a great block, turns it upfield to the 41-yard line. Brought down by number 40, Greg Ewell, and 17, Eric Williams. Well, a quarterback that can scramble is another weapon. The defense has covered the receivers, a little bit of running room. Clayton doesn't hesitate. He pulls up behind the block of the offensive lineman, Bill Lewis, the center, 6'6", 275 pounds out in front of him. Paul Miles was in for one play, and now DuBose has come back at the tailback position for Nebraska. First down, ball up near the 41. DuBose with it, makes it, ball is dropped, and recovered by Florida State. Dana Brinson dropped the football, and Stanley Scott is all over it. So the Huskers are hurting themselves with their own mistakes. Reverse pitching the ball back to DuBose. Then he hands off on the reverse play to Brinson, who has not practiced very much. Keith Brinson has been injured, out of practice for about a week or 10 days. And you can see he's trying to, he never gets the ball really in his arms. He's juggling it a little bit from the very beginning and finally just drops it. Florida State first down at the Nebraska 39, leading 17-13, 2.50 to go first half, and Cletus Jones pops into the middle for about three Cletus yards Jones. and a flag down at the line of scrimmage. There is a flag on the play. Florida State with two timeouts on this position of the field. Circumstances, those two timeouts could be a big factor. It's against the Seminoles' procedure. Well, to move it. Well, with 2.49 left, it's questionable whether they refuse the penalty and instead of taking the penalty of five yards and giving them that down over again. Yeah, they're going to take the penalty. Florida State is going into, what, a 14-mile-an-hour win if we start thinking about a field goal. Ball comes back to the 44. Procedure on the offense. Only six men on the line. Still first down. Well, the rules say you have to have a minimum of seven. You can have eight, nine, ten men on the line of scrimmage, but you have to have at least seven. Usually that's because by a wing back, not up on the line of scrimmage, or a flanker is lined up in the backfield by mistake. Palmer and Smith split. McManus, little flip, falls loose. Smith comes back. I don't know who can think Nebraska got it, and they did. It's an incomplete pass, Keith. It's an incomplete pass, unless he caught the ball. If they call it, if he caught the ball and ran with it, it it's a fumble. But it, the, it was a lateral I mean, it was ball. A shuffle pass. The, they're hollering it's an incomplete pass. Now, it, it depends upon whether he had possession of the ball. That's the shovel pass. They're talking about it. It's the shovel pass. If he doesn't have completion of it, it's incomplete. 
and they need to replay to see it because nobody saw it. It's an incomplete pass. Yeah, it was a shovel pass. Absolutely. It was bubbled. Incomplete pass. That's right. Good call. Good call. <laughs> see it again. I knew that. Way to go, Frank. That's the reason they run this play, Keith. If it's a fumble on the draw play, it's a it's the other team's ball. But the receiver Smith never has possession of it. The ball is kicked out. That's a forward pass. The ball should be brought all the way back. Just an incomplete pass. Hey, hey. <laughs> I, listen, in the in the in the Liberty Bowl, Paul Rada and oh, and Bear Bryant were playing. Bear ran that. And they called it a fumble, and Bear went out on the field, Keith. I'll never forget, 15 years ago, Bear went right out on the field and said, Dad, tell me that's an incomplete pass. And the officials listened to him and brought it back. <laughs> that was at least 15 years ago when they played Colorado in, the, in Memphis. <clears throat> well, give these guys credit. They talked about it. Yes, they did. But they were, they were alerted to the fact by the Florida State bench. <laughs> Sammy Smith is now in at the tailback position for Florida State behind Palmer at fullback. Noise officials have stopped it for some reason. I'm not sure, Keith, why, but the officials have asked for a referee's discretionary timeout. They don't know exactly where the ball was. <laughs> that's, that's and the they don't know the right down there. either. They've got second down. It should be third down because they ran the fullback up the middle on first down. Second down was the pass. Should be third down. <laughs> well, maybe second down. Maybe that, well, it was a penalty. I'm sorry. Yeah, the fullback up right. the middle. There was penalty. Yeah. So it's second down. Okay, we're back ready to go. Yeah, the ball's passed and they've now put it down on the 44. That's where the penalty put the ball. And then you had the incomplete forward pass. Yes. So it's second down and uh, about 15. McManus hands the ball off to Smith. And Smith is caught and thrown down. Just short of the 38-yard line by Danny Noonan, the big junior from Lincoln. Third and long. Florida State has made conversions on third and long twice so far in this ball game. Now they've got third and about, what, 14, Keith? They've got to be very careful. They do not want to give an interception. Who's the tight end? Pat yeah. Carter? Pat Carter, 85. Let's see. No, it's 86. 96. Pete 96. Panthers. Pete Panthers, the senior. He split out. Will be a secondary receiver down the middle. They suck him. Number 96, Jim Scow. Got him. Jim Scout had six sacks last year. His coaches tell me he's sneaky. He gets the jump on the offensive tackle, then he reverses and goes back when it's a play-action play. Just second effort, the tackle blocking at him all the while, but not before he can pass to be thrown before he's sacked. Great effort by Scout. Nebraska defense stands up to the test, and the mistake for the offense, the fumble to Florida State, is turned away as the Seminoles go to the punt. Barry gets it away. Good kick. And here comes number two with it, Tom Shepard. And Shepard gets out to about the 25-yard line with 1-0-1 to play in the first half. That was a 38-yard punt into the wind and a 10-yard return by Shepard. And Shepard showed some courage by not calling a fair catch and he got 10 yards out of it he showed a burst of speed didn't he Keith? Mm -hmm. when he when he started he just made everybody else look like they were in slow motion that's up now four -oh. over the duck now clayton the sophomore quarterback has a very strong arm i'm told he can throw it very very deep from the 25 clayton pressure down Behind the line of scrimmage, number 65, Daryl Gray, outside linebacker from Lake Wales, Florida, brought him down. Initial pass protection was good. Gray was blocked out as were the other Seminole players. Receivers covered. The pass was called to the wing back in the middle, and the linebackers of Florida State had dropped so deep, Keith, that there was no place to throw it. Clayton could do nothing but eat the ball. Loss is three yards back to the 22. 20, 20. 20, 20. Hand off to Doug DuBose. And DuBose runs into Greg Newell. Ball is carried 
spins his way up close to the 35 and close to a first down. Time remaining, 17 seconds. Florida State playing a very conservative game, knowing that no Justin Nebraska Solomon has no timeout. Tackle. Let them run first the football. Even if they make a first down, they stop the clock momentarily, but hard to score without any timeouts from this part of the field unless you just get a tip ball or something like that. Florida State very deep. They're not in victory defense, Pete. They're in a regular defense, just playing cautious. Clayton back, looks to throw again, has pressure, throws it, and the pass is incomplete, intended for DuBose, and there's a penalty flag. If this pass interference, either be a 15-yard penalty and a first down, or pass interference on the offense is what Florida State's seeming to say, think. Holding against Nebraska. Yeah. You only got four seconds remaining. Keith, that's in these new officiating group of seven, the five officials are covering and and sighting in on the receivers and I guess the tight end who didn't release on the play was blocking and holding on it. The, the tight end 80 is holding on 83 Scott the young uh, sophomore rush he gets his arm outside he can use his hands as long as he keeps his arms on inside the frame of the body if he gets outside they're trying to call that and stress that and that was illegal and a 10 yard penalty now the clock, the ball was stopped dead by pass, so you'll get one more play, Keith, or two, two more, 17 seconds. I don't know, Nebraska might just stick it in the middle and go to the clubhouse. Well, Florida State used 54 players in this first half, and Nebraska used 54 players because of the heat. That's smart, Keith. That's a pattern that we, ex we expect. Yep, yeah, they're going to run out the clock. But Doug DuBose is going to get something out of it, isn't he? He runs the ball all the way to the Florida State 49, and the half is over. So that adds an impressive amount to his totals in the first half. At halftime, the Seminoles of Florida State 17, Nebraska 13. Coach Bobby Bowden now with Tim Brent. All right, Keith, I've got to ask you right away. A couple of these big gainers up the middle. It looked like uh, the kids were running out of there. Are you going to try to stay home a little bit more in the second half? Well, we're going to have to, but, and yet their quarterback killed us on the option in the second quarter. The first first quarter, they killed us up the middle. I thought we saw that. Then they started running that option with a second quarterback who looks real good at it. So we got we got to take away that option run and that thing up the middle. Conditioning is going to be a factor. You guys, with uh, Hurricane Helena, you practiced inside for 11 days, and you opened last weekend indoors. Uh, can you hold up strong in the fourth quarter? We're in the briar patch. This is our kind of weather. <laughs> One other question. When you went out there on the little shuffle pass, did they know that it was a shuffle pass until you told them? I told them before the ball game, we're going to throw that thing, and it's an incomplete pass. And I've been darned. I thought they awarded it to them. Well, they did it first. Yeah, well, they got corrected right quick. <laughs> All right, Bobby. Good luck in the second half. All right, so Florida State leads at 17-13, and we'll be back here in Lincoln after this commercial message and a word from your local station. Stu Snapper, and he had some some gloves on that were all wet with moisture and he couldn't get them off because they were taped on and so he, he just couldn't snap the ball well. That's one of those things that happens to you. It's you know, one thing you just hope doesn't happen. And then we laid the ball on the ground one more time and Florida State played pretty much air free football and I guess that was the difference in the two teams. Who's going to play quarterback now? Clayton was exciting, made things happen. Well, we'll start out with Travis Turner again. We'll play McCatherine as, a, as the half goes along. Okay. Okay. Well, before I get in this kickoff, Keith, I'm going to throw it back up to you. <laughs> all right, Timmy, thank you. <laughs> now, what do you think about the temperature now? Has it cooled off at all? Good breeze blowing down here, but the surface, the floor right here is still awfully hot. I mean, your feet are burning, and it's an effort just to get around. But uh, really, no ill effects to the players. There have been very few cramps. They're keeping fluids in them, and I know talking to the trainers, they said that they gave the kids a lot of bananas yesterday and today to get that potassium into their system. Right. All right, Chuck Wells joins along the receiving line, Tanner Holloman and uh, Curtis Thomas for Florida State. Chuck is the man in the middle, number 44. As Nebraska will kick off, Florida State is leading 17-13. The second half is on. That's a very high, long kick. The wind blows it way back into the end zone, and Wells will not return it. Florida State will come out to the 20. First down, Nebraska sends out Brad Smith, 230 pounds, along with Chris Buckman, a 250-pound tackle. Danny Noonan, 275, the nose guard. Jim Scow, a big first half, is the other tackle, 250. And Greg Reeves at defensive end, 225. Linebackers are Mike Knox, 235, and Mark Munford, a junior, at 230. They lead the defensive unit up front. We'll give you the secondary in a moment. Florida State comes out with uh, Chuck Wells at tailback. They've got Cletus Jones at fullback, and Danny McManus is the quarterback. From the 20, goes to the fullback, Cletus Jones, three hard yards. 
It'll be second down in seven, brought down by Mike Knox. Dennis Watkins is the left cornerback for Nebraska, junior college transfer from Chicago. Cleo Miller's the other corner. He also a J.C. transfer. Home is Dallas. The safety, strong safety, Brian Washington, a true sophomore, and Brian Siebler is the free safety, a junior out of Fremont, Nebraska. Second down and seven for Florida State. They didn't make any mistakes of note in that first half of play. As Tom Osborne said, seemed to be the difference in the ball game. McManus gives this time to the tailback, Chuck Wells, to the 25, and there he's pinned down. The offense, the backfield as we gave it to you. The wide receivers are Herb Gaynor and Darren Holloman, and the people up front, as best we can determine at this point, pretty much the starter, except Salva is not in there. Salva did not start the ball game and uh, is hurt and would play only if they had to have him. Here are the stats for the first half. Just about what we would expect. Nebraska runs the best. Florida State passes. The defense is the one that are making some tactical changes during the half. Offensively, we'll see pretty much the same thing. Third down and five. They run it on third and five. A relatively conservative play for a Bobby Bowden team a leading in the ball game. Nebraska stops him after two yards and forced the punt into the win. That was a surprise call, Keith, because they're going into the win, which could uh, short kick would give Nebraska a good field position. The defense has done their assignment, stop, force the kick, giving uh, hopefully giving their team good field position. Well, it will be interesting to see how much Nebraska grew at halftime. Sometimes teams do. When you're trailing, you, you show the character and the leadership, particularly the leadership, Keith. Lewis Berry's punt is into the win. It's a very good kick considering it. Vaughn Shepard takes it, drops back to the 33, and comes back to about the 40 with it. So it is a 40-yard punt and a 7-yard return, and the Florida State Seminoles send out to play defense. Garth Jacks, an outside linebacker. Isaac Williams is a defensive tackle. 260, Todd Stroud in the middle at nose is 235, Gerald Nichols 265, the other tackle, the other outside backer is Daryl Gray 235, and the inside people, strong side will be Fred Jones, outstanding first half, and Paul McGowan. And the basket starts big, moving the football from the 40, all the way across to the Florida State 48, and you can see, I think, off that play, a little more determination as the offensive line gave Doug DeBose a good hold. Martin Mayhew is one of the corners for Florida State. Eric Williams is the other corner. A sophomore, Deion Sanders, is uh, in the ball game. And Stan Scheiber, Greg Newell, played a whole lot in that uh, first half of play. Second carry is by Tom Rathman, the fullback. And Rathman from the Seminoles, 48, gets it down close to the 45. Start this, as we have already seen, the, the linebackers, the shooting, the quarterback, Travis Turner, is back in there, as Tom Austin mentioned. There's the backfield. Offensive front pretty much the same. On second down and call it eight. Turner, turn around, throws the pass that is deflected at the line of scrimmage, and that may have been a blessing because the Dana <laughs> Brinson was out there uh, as the receiver, number 33, but there was a defender over there that uh, would have intercepted the football had it not been deflected at the line of scrimmage. When the quarterback throws from right behind the line of scrimmage, the defensive backs do not give a cushion. They come up and play very tight. Keith was right. It could have been an interception hadn't been deflected. Eric Williams is the defender hovering in that area. Turner back pressure from the backside, and he is nailed by Daryl Gray, the outside backer on that side, playing what amounts to a defensive end position. And Gray really planted it. The blitz was on. Man for man in the secondary. 65 gets a good jump. He had, what, I think, four sacks last year. You can see that he has the ability to close. That is the secret. Close to that football. And he grabbed the arms, which is smart. Don't go for the feet. Don't go for the head. It's a penalty. Clasp the arms where he cannot throw it. There is nobody beat for Florida State. As Nebraska goes to the punt. Wingard hits it high, bad kick. Keith, that's a terrible play by, by the kicker. All he had to do was kick it down the middle and it could have killed the ball inside the 10-yard line. Ball no safety Right off that. the side of his foot, he cold dead shanked it. He gets eight yards on the punt. And Wingard with an opportunity just to knock it down there and kill it deep.
shanked it out of bounds to get an eight-yard punt out of it. So neither team quite ready for that particular play. Sammy Smith opens the second half at tailback, and McManus puts it in the air, and the pass is incomplete, and it is not McManus's fault. Herb Gaynor had the ball right on the numbers, and he just simply let it bounce off his chest. You're right, Keith. Instead of catching the ball in his hands and cradling it to his, to his chest, he lets the ball come all the way to his chest. Then he doesn't close it fast enough. Watch the ball hits his chest and bounces right out. Good receivers break the, the force of the ball with their hands, and then, if necessary, cradle it in. Gaynor's just a sophomore. Heard hook beats. <laughs> That's true, too. He, Number 42, Carl, was coming right on him. Tony Smith is in the backfield now with Cletus Jones and McManus passing second time in a row. Throws the short pass to the tailback, and Tony Smith stretches out and is close to a first down. When Jim Scow, number 7, 96, is the best pass rusher for Nebraska, just excellent. What do you do when you've got a great pass rusher? You put two men on him. You put the tackle, then you pull the guard out, or you keep the back in. You've got to keep their best pass rusher off of your passer. That was a classic double team and a completed pass also. As a result of the double team and good pass protection, excessive time for the quarterback. They're studying the posture of the ball for a long time and they're trying to move the chains and make it first down for Florida State at their own 47-yard line. They lead 17-13, and that youngster right there, number 14, Danny McManus, a sophomore out of Hollywood, Florida. He's 6'1", 190, and has a fine-looking blonde mustache. And more than that, Keith, he's got a great arm. <laughs> For Coach, he's worried about that arm and the quick feet. He seems to have both. Quick feet dodging the first rush. Not a scrambler, but dodges the rush. Throw it again. Going down deep. Holloman's Nephew. down there. Should be intercepted. It is not as Holloman turns into a defender and knocks the ball away. Siebler was waiting. Ball was thrown high. Turned into a little bit of a flutter as the wind knocked it down and Holloman will knock it away. Well, Holloman, once he realizes he's not going to get the ball, he becomes a defender. He switches over to try to knock the pass down to prevent the interception. He does it perfectly. Classic example, receiver can't catch the ball, be sure that it's not intercepted. Watch it. He becomes just like a defensive back, Keith, and knocks it down. Second down Good and ten. Good play. Good play. Smart play. 11.25 to go in the third quarter. And McManus got pressure, got it away. Throws it to number 44, Chuck Wells, the tailback, who was the safety valve on the play. But Wells is well short of the first down. Oh, it'll be third at the Florida State, close to five. Now you see McManus looking over the sideline. Bob Bowden and his assistants are calling the play. They're wig-waggling the play in so that they do not have to substitute. You get the plays in fast about the wig-waggle, but you have a, there's always a risk, Keith, that the other team can steal them. 74 coming off the field. Lopez holding his right leg. Tim Hebron goes in to replace him at That's the offensive cramp. tackle spot. Looked like a cramp. Inches up the lift. Accupants, all he needed. Third down, four and a half. McManus, pressure on him, has to unload. And number 76 actually had a shot to intercepting it. Chris Buckman. Big tackle was shoved to the outside, and Chris made a pass at the ball, didn't quite get it. And Nebraska's defense is held, and number 49, Tony Smith, the Florida State, seems hurt on the play. What was Fat Buckman, the line tackle, doing out in the flat? He was coming out to play the screen because the defensive ends were blitzing. And he was changing responsibility, which gives him a chance to come out and make a play, and he came close to intercepting for a touchdown. Time is out on the field for Tony Smith. You've got 10.39 to go third quarter. Tim Brandt back here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Mark Munford, the outstanding linebacker for Nebraska, has come off the field. They are working on him on the sidelines here. He is suffering from cramps in the calf. They expect him to get back. He is a tough kid, but I'll tell you, he came off in a lot of pain. The cramps are in his calf. The first time that we've seen the heat really take a toll on one of the players. Keith? Well, Florida State, Nebraska, each with a man off. Tony Smith had his bell rung, walked off the field, but he was a bit wobbly. Here's the punt by Lewis Berry, and that's a good one into the wind. Whoa, is that a good one? Let me tell you about it, folks. He's knocked that thing out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Just outside, uh, or just inside the five, 
into a 14-hour win. He hits it 42 yards. Bobby Dodd of Georgia Tech would be proud because he lined up on the left hash mark, Keith, and instead of trying to kick it down the left boundary, which you could uh, slice or hook it over, he kicked it across field. Next week's lineup for you on our presentation of college football. It's a Some good one. split national. You can have your choice depending on what part of the country. Well, you don't have choice depending on what part of the country you live in. Some of you will see BYU Washington. Some of you will see UCLA Tennessee. In Knoxville, Tennessee, they'll have 95,000 people there. Nebraska goes to work from the four. Give the ball to Doug DeBose. Hit at the five. Finds his way to the ten. Strong running. Flashing through there by DeBose. I know a lot of fans would wonder why would Turner be back at quarterback, Keith, when Clayton looks so good in the second quarter. A coach knows he's got to have more than one quarterback, and the rookie doesn't need all the pressure. Right now, let Turner, who has played successfully for him in the past and effectively, take some of these snaps close to the goal line. Put Clayton in at the proper time. Pick the spot for him. Second down, four. Contact is made by number 71 in white. 68 pull first, Keith. The tackle pulled, Tom broke Welter. the snap count. Yeah, Tom he was going. He was going to pull and lead the the reverse play, the misdirection play of the tailback. Oh, that changes second five on your own ten is pretty easy to make. Here, here are the offensive yards of the first half, and we it points out Nebraska has been predominantly a Dead running ball. team. Ball start on the offense. Still second down. Last year, they were 97th in the nation out of 103 Division I teams in passing, but they were outstanding in running. The only thing about this, Keith, is if they get behind, then they've got a problem. Yep. They have to throw. They throw by surprise. Second down and nine from the five. Turner out of his end zone. Gets it off. Goes deep. Too high and incomplete. The receiver downfield. Running a good pattern, Schnitzler, but he was just not tall enough. Frayne wouldn't get it. Keith Frayne, the tight end, was wide open. The safety man to the right of your screen, I don't know whether we can see it. It's a fake play going for the bomb, but Frayne, the tight end, had beaten the strong safety, and he was wide open. You can see number 80, he's behind everybody. Schnitzler's coming across on the post route. Ball was a little bit high. Mayhew was there to defend against him. The Turner's now one open. out of seven. He's missed six in a row. Third down and nine, option it, Turner keeps it, and he's banged up at the nine-yard line. So they'll have to punt it, but the kicker will have the win. McGowan, that backer, filled that spot very well for Florida State. And so the Seminoles leading, 17-13. will get the ball back and should have pretty good field position if Sanders handles it. Mark Cooper is back in the ball game, incidentally, the regular snapper for Nebraska. Florida State excel in blocking kicks, Keith. They blocked 10 punts last year. 10. Only oh, they come out of it. Wingard gets it out of there all right, and Sanders circles, takes it up to Nebraska 48, and falls down toward the goal line, so he'll get a one-yard return on the punt. 38-yarder. Field position means so much. Florida State average starting position has been their own 45. Nebraska their own 26. Florida State playing without Hassan Jones who suffered a separated shoulder. Their fine wide receiver but so far doing pretty well as Sammy Smith. A freshman tailback gets down to about the 42. That's a five yard pickup for him. Here, here are the field position charts and you convert field position possession where you take over and the points if you should offensively take over inside the other team's territory you score 60 percent of the time eric thomas is in there believe it or not at a wide receiver position split in because he was the quarterback last year along with kurt coker and there's a flag on this play but uh, Thomas now looking for a place to play is willing to go over and try to be a wide receiver. Watch Jim Scow get knocked down. Knocked all the way down by the tackle. The good football players, good defensive players chase the football. They all feel like they've always got a chance. Scow comes in and helps on the tackle. Just a tremendous effort by a good defensive football player. That's Penalties the is on game. the Seminoles here. Ball comes back just outside the Nebraska 46. John McClendon. Illegal procedure. 
On the offense, it is still second down. Keith Florida State has been very conservative in this second half. I think that uh, going into the win, you're likely to be conservative. You hope you can get out of the third quarter facing the win, uh, still leading, and then have a chance to do more offense in the fourth quarter with the win. It's second down and ten. That pass was intended for Holloman, and it was high and behind him. Tough pass to throw. That quick slant is most difficult to defend against because at it's also the most difficult to throw. Auburn is one. USC is one. Maryland lost. Illinois lost. Washington and BYU get together a little later this evening out in Provo, Utah. Oh, no. UCLA and BYU get together later this evening. Washington, Washington plays Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. That's Seattle. right. Third down and ten. McManus down the middle. This time Holloman pulls it in. McManus gave him a pass that he had a chance on that time, and the little guy sucked it right in. Fourth but down and short one, Keith. Four short of a first down. Yes, good defensive play by the secondary closing on the completed pass. Once Holloman catches the ball, you see the defensive secondary close on him right there as he leaves his feet, trying to hold him back. Right, three, four red shirts there. On fourth and two, Bobby Bowden says, let's punt that thing. We lead by four. We're going into the win. Let's kick it. And that's a smart play right now. And the win is a factor, Keith. You must must take that into account. Barry, high in the air. Wind's going to knock it straight down. They got a shot to kill it deep. And they do. Down around the 10 or 11 yard line. Ball bounced back up field on them. If it had bounced forward, they had three white shirts down there on the goal line to keep it from going in. Washington and Dallas coming up here on ABC next Monday night. The premiere of the NFL season on ABC. And then moving along to Thursday night, another presentation involving the Los Angeles Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs. Both games, 8 o'clock Eastern time on these ABC stations. McCathern Clayton is the quarterback. Put it on the 12. First down, Nebraska. Dubos ambles along. When Dubos ambles, <laughs> he's going about 40 miles an hour. <laughs> You're right. He's when a, he turns it on, it's a lookout. He, he's a slasher with moves. Most slashes, the backs who just try to split an area, are uh, breakaway threats. Dubos is so effective because he can do both. He has the moves, and he also can slash through for yardage. 16 carries, 108 yards in the ball game. It's just short of the 19. Second down, three. Clayton still got the ball, throws it, passes caught for a first down up at the 25. It's Dana Brinson, the wing back, and a penalty flag. Keith, there's a penalty somewhere downfield against Nebraska. Oh, that, that hurts. Must have been offensive pass interference, offensive something downfield. Offensive interference. That's a loss of down, too. Well, they're just killing themselves with mistakes. Yes. Key factor in this second half, though, was when Wingard kicked the ball eight yards. And he uh, had nobody deep for Florida State and shanked the ball out of bounds, trying to angle for the corner when, in fact, he did not have to because there was no one deep. So. As a result, Florida State got good field position, and as a result, they have played this second half so far on the Nebraska end of the field. For those of you that joined us late, the black number... Offensive, on the pass interference, it'll be a loss of a down, it'll be third down. This black number, 94, on all of the Nebraska helmets is in memory of their tight end who took his own life about three weeks ago. Brian Heeman. Brian Heeman. Ball back on the 10. It is third down and 12. Clayton coming down the line on the option play. Turns it back inside. Tough and spinning and fighting, but too far to go, McEthern. And it'll now be fourth down. And the Cornhuskers will have to go back to the punt. The penalty stopped Nebraska. 
Clayton comes in and make, has a good series, hits a pass for the first down on the other side of the field, away from the pass, with interference with the offensive receiver on the defensive back, stopping the drive, the penalty. Winger now in the punt, again with the win. His longest today, 48. Nebraska, excuse me, Florida State are very effective at blocking the kicks. They're coming from the left side. Almost got it. Ball takes a Nebraska bounce, however. Bounces over Sanders' head and turns into a big one. Deion Sanders had to come all the way from midfield, uh, from the center of the field to the sidelines to get it, but look how close this is. Coming from the left of your screen, the Florida State uh, defender leaves his feet, dives out in front, so he will not hit the kicker, will not rough it, the punter in case he doesn't get the ball, misses it, and then the ball bounces far from Nebraska. They roll about 16-yard average, Keith. Robinson, number 15, is succeeded Joe Wessel as the designated punt blocker for the Seminoles. Joe had six himself last year. Robinson just about had his first. McManus pitches the ball to Sammy Smith. Going wide, Smith is colored and brought down by Tony Holloway. Defensive end. Holloway, number 91, is an interesting story. He was an inside linebacker, and... Nebraska was just uh, overstocked with inside linebackers, so he wanted to move to the outside position, and he asked to be redshirted in his junior year so he could learn to play the position. McManus gives it to Smith again, steps through the line, uh, knocked off his balance, and goes down at about the 34. Again, Tim Brandt. Keith, the reason that we have not seen Darren Holloman in the last two series, he took a shot, or in this series anyway, he took a shot to the sternum. He's in a lot of pain right now. Darren Holloman, the wide receiver for Florida State. Going he's been an in integral right part of this game, and it looks like he's gotten clearance, but he was really suffering on the sidelines, took a shot to that sternum, so he's in a little bit of pain. Latest Jones comes off the field now for Florida State. Tanner Holloman goes in at the fullback position, making his second appearance in the ball game as a blocker and or running back. It is third down and a long five. McManus, plenty of time. Shoots it down the middle. Holloman makes the catch. First down, Seminole. He was in a crowd, too, Keith. He held on to that football for dear life. Number, number 46, of course, is, is uh, Chad Daffer, who had a great game in the Sugar Bowl. You know, Keith intercepted yep. two passes. Number 46, he hit him, boy. That's a helmet right into the numbers. Watch this. This is what the receivers have to be prepared for. The great thing about Hollum, he's only 5'6". He holds on to that ball. He catches it. He protects it. He gathers himself and takes the blow and holds on to it. Dale Grant, a wide receiver. David Palmer in the fullback now. Sammy Smith is your tailback. McManus gives it to Smith. Big hole up the middle for Sammy Smith. And another Florida State first down near the Nebraska 45. Which team looks tired right now? Nebraska. Nebraska. You're right, Keith. And this was a good example on this play. Nebraska linebackers, Knox is being blocked right there. Normally, Knox and Mumford would make that play right in the line of scrimmage. But they couldn't do it on Smith, and he broke for the first down. Smith again. Just running over people. 215 pounder, 350 to play third quarter. Neil Smith made the tackle that time for Nebraska. Who does Sammy Smith remind you of as a young player? Herschel Walker. Right. He Let's has that like body it. lean, and he takes those big steps, and the defenders, like Walker, when the defenders hit him, it's a mismatch. Those linebackers and defensive backs May not be able to slow him down once he gets a little momentum going. Comes off the field now. A slow process of seasoning on the part of Coach Bobby Bowden. He's got Chuck Wells back in there. Tony Smith has not returned since he was helped off the field. And there's gang tackling by the Huskers on second down and six. Chief, that's the most impressive defensive ga play of the game by Nebraska. Washington is an interesting story. One of the best athletes they've ever had, number five. Washington, the strong safety coming up and forcing very quickly. As we look at Smith, the young freshman. Gordon without a huddle. Yeah. Ball is at the Nebraska 39. Third down and four. Up the middle. Well, thumb of the ball. They've marked him down. Woo! That's close. They've marked him down at the 36. That was close call. It'll be fourth and one. They'll go for it here. That's... Let's see if we can detect whether the ball was actually fumbled by Wells, number 44. He's protecting the ball. Oh, my goodness alive. 
I think it bounced right back to him, though, didn't it? Well, Nebraska thought, the players thought they had it. Neil Smith, the man had stripped it, and Smith is right there grappling for it. But it may have bounced right back up underneath it. Fourth and one. Tony Smith is back in there. They give it to the fullback, Cletus Jones. He doesn't make it, Keith. He did not Great make play. He did not make it. He tried, went in there standing up, and the linebackers just buried him. Fourth down attempt failure ignites the football team, Keith, more than anything I've ever experienced. You can watch the crowd come to life. Watch the team. That fires the team up more than anything, even if, as much as a block punt. Well, as you said, the crowd responds. The Nebraska offense comes on, timeout on the field. It's sort of like sitting on uh, a smoldering fire. How to kick, Keith, is right. I was going to say that, but I, that's a little violent for a <laughs> yeah. Keith Jones is in the backfield. A sophomore, 185-pounder from Omaha at tailback for Nebraska. First down Huskers, their own 36. They've just stopped Florida State on fourth down. Clayton option. Jones trailing, and Clayton did not <laughs> deliver the ball to him. Mayhew coming up off the corner. These are games completed today. Bo Jackson, big start in his race for the Heisman at 49-7. Auburn beating Southwest Louisiana. Southern California ranked highly going into the preseason. They highly regarded on the West Coast and showed it beating the Illini 20-10. Keith Jones in a tailback is the fastest Husker ever. 4-3-3 in the 40. Clayton back to throw. Goes down the middle with it. The pass is deflected and incomplete. And oh, it was close. It was close. McGowan was the man that knocked it away from Frayne. Penn State continued its dominance of Maryland. 20-18. Maryland's only beaten them one time in that series of 29 ball games. And Boston College edges the Temple Owls 28-25 in a game today. A lot of games being played tonight. West Virginia rolling over Louisville. John Leland showing off his new version of Mountaineers. Colorado beat Colorado State today 23-10. And here's Clayton rolling, getting protected. Pulls it down, going to keep it. Running for the marker. He's there. He's got a first down for the Huskers up at their own 47-yard line. Keith, that was impressive. The reason I say that... Clayton, once he got outside of containment, he recognizes that he's a better runner than he possibly is a passer. He had a sense first down, and he turned it on. Look at the yardage that he has made running with a football, either on the option play or scramble on a pass. Six times for 79 yards. Now it's Nebraska's turn offensively to try to grind on the Florida State defenders. Time running out in the third quarter of play. From the 47, ball goes to Keith Jones. Load up and won't get much. He's a sophomore. Stanley Scott and Terry Warren combined for the tackle for the Seminoles. And they give him two yards on the carry. Florida State defense has been impressive in this third quarter. They made some adjustments during the halftime and seem to have played uh, much better, more consistently against Nebraska offense. Held them scoreless in the third period. Second down and eight. Clayton hands it off to the front man, Rathman, and Tom Burroughs down to the Florida State 45. So now the Huskers will be looking at third down and about two and a half yards. When you've There's got a heck of a difference yeah. between two and two and a half. Keith, when you've got a quarterback that can run like Clayton, you're frightened as a defensive coach to put the blitz on. He can get outside and score with, with the ball. So you, you have to be cautious right here. I don't look for the blitz. Clayton goes outside on a delayed pitch to Von Shepard on his way down the sidelines. He's out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Von Shepard, another sophomore from St. Paul, Minnesota, almost scored. The option play faked to the tailback and pitched to the wingback coming around. And as soon as the cornerback took the pitch, Clayton pulled up very cautiously and laid the ball out. And Shepard turns it over. He just stepped out of bounds according to officials right there. Oh, there's been a touchdown. Mayhew knocked him out of bounds. So we've got 15 minutes to go. The Cornhuskers are threatening now. They trail 17-13. 
A four point difference in the ball game. Florida State leading, but Nebraska now has the ball first down at the Seminoles 14 yard line. And Clayton is the quarterback with Rathman and DuBose now behind him. It goes to Rathman, the fullback. He fumbled. They're going in. Oh, Florida State's got the ball at their eight yard line. Ball popped right out when he was first tackled, Keith, right and went forward right into the Florida State secondary's head. Look like. Stanley Scheiber recovers for the Seminoles. And here's Jim. All right, in case you have just joined us, we will bring you up to date once again on the Pete Rose situation. Rose today, 0 for 4 with a walk in Chicago against the Cubs. Still two hits short of 4,191 Ty Cobb's Major League record for most career hits. ABC will interrupt its regular programming to show you the record-tying and record-breaking hits at the time they occur. Tomorrow, again the Reds against the Cubs in Chicago. Steve Trout on the mound, a left-hander for the Cubs. Back to Keith Jackson. Florida State goes to work. Little shovel pass to Chuck Wells from the eight-yard line as Nebraska once again has frittered away an opportunity. I don't know that I've ever seen a Nebraska football team under Tom Osborne make this many mistakes. Fred Jones, number 55, has played every defensive play. He's going to take his left arm and reach it right in there and strip the ball out. And you can see it pop forward. Way back, number 40, Newell nearly recovers it. It bounces out. 37, Shiva recovers it. Near the 10 now, second down and about nine. McManus all the way at quarterback for the Seminoles. And he's going to throw. Down the middle, oh, goes to the sideline with it. And it is incomplete. The pass intended for Gaynor and defending on the play was Mike Curl. The pattern that most college teams throw. Jim Scow laid a lick on McManus back there at the goal line when he delivered the ball, and McManus is thrashing around right now, hurt on the play. I believe that's McManus who's down. You, well, on the pass that was just thrown, Gaina was a little bit uh, delayed. Yeah, but that doesn't have no, any matter right. at all. No, it's McManus is who's down. Hoping he just got the breath knocked out of him and not injured. He's had such a great game. Sophomore started his first game against Tulane, 14 out of 19, 73% completion average. Today he's just been spectacular and, and mixing it up. He's 15 out of 27 for 169 yards and one TD. Scow, who has been after him all day and on occasions has gotten him, now McManus is getting up. It looks like he will be all right. So perhaps he was just deflated. Kurt Coker, number 11, coming out, is the quarterback behind McManus and stops for a moment to speak to him and now goes on to the field. It was Coker. We saw him against uh, South Carolina yes. last year. He was their starting quarterback, and here's what happened. Scow from the left, number 96. McManus delayed his throw. He re -cocked. The ball is thrown, and uh, Scow puts his helmet in there. If he hit him a high... It would be a penalty if hit him below. I think it was a good play. Oh, well, Coker's now got some heat on him. As he had third down play coming cold. Uh, it's hard to be cold today. They give it to Sammy Smith, the big tailback, and they finally wrestle him down around the 15-yard line. And Washington again leading the defensive play for the Huskers, and they have held Florida State. Smith today, uh, he only had 25 yards last week on nine carries against Tulane. Didn't play much today. He's had 10 carries. For 58 yards. But the, the whole point here is that Nebraska pins him up at the 15 and should have good field position. But Barry, with the wind at his back, is capable of just killing the punt. Well, didn't get all of it, but it's a pretty good one. And he, he hits touched it. the ball. No, I didn't. didn't think he did. Florida State covers it at the 40. I thought uh, number two, Shepard, was dangerously close to it, and the ball took an unusual bounce back into the field of play. A 41-yard punt. 13-19 to play in the game. Florida State hanging on to a 17-13 lead. But no scoring in this second half. The Huskers had one going with a first down on the 14 and coughed up the ball, turned it over. Now they've got their best starting point of the ball game for the first snap of a series just beyond their own 44-yard line. And Keith Florida State has three new defensive linemen, fresh defensive linemen in the ballgame. 
Gabbard, Shavers, Scott. Clayton is the quarterback. Options down the line. Goes to DeBose. Puts it back inside. And picks up eight yards. Keep oh, he's quick. In, that, in the last year's game against Oklahoma, he gave that 360-degree turn on two critical situations. DuBose does a 360 to escape the would-be tackle. Number 55, Jones, first makes some pitch, and now let's see who it is out here. It's Newell. Greg 40, Newell. Newell, the safety, just does a 360 in the wake. Of, now he's going to do another 360 right here if he doesn't get away. Second down and two. Ball at Florida State, 47. Plate rolls it, looking for a pass. Nobody really to throw to. Set up a screen for DuBose. And DuBose is on the chalk. Down around the 31-yard line of Florida State. 32, maybe. Felton Hayes finally brought him down. Throwback screen is always dangerous to the tailback. He gets lost. You fake to the tailback, and then the linebackers and all forget about him. And Clayton throws it out there, and they got a lot of blockers in front of him. And the lineman can go downfield and block if the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage before the catch. That's what happens. Just inside the 32. First down for the Huskers. The most goes to that strong side, and he's got four at least. The strategy of shifting the tight end from a field position into the boundary, given an unbalanced line, has really given Florida State some adjustment problems. On that occasion, as Keith mentioned, Florida State didn't have enough people over there. They were lucky to get him down, get Dubos down. Give him five, second down and five. Yeah, by the time they put Frayne over there and then add the wing back Lindstrom to it, they, they've got him outmanned about, uh, what, six to four. Still a numbers game in the key. Yep. People dancing around at the line of scrimmage. Wraps in the meantime, breaks one for the first down all the way down to the Seminoles 12. It's a great thing to have a fullback. It's a threat carrying the ball. Nebraska's always run the trap. The right guard is pulling and trapping the linebacker, number 38, McGowan, and that is a tough block, a tough block. Then 21 misses him right there in the hole, and into the second there goes Rath. Mark it on the 13. Another first down for the Cornhuskers. And yeah, let's see if they can make another mistake or if they can succeed. Clayton gives the ball to DuBose. They handled DuBose. They, there was nothing in the middle. He started off tackle. There was nothing there. And he bounced outside. He ran into two more. Rashava made a sensational tackle. One-on-one -on -one in open field against a player like DuBose is a difficult thing to pull off. He made the play, forced the tackle, and no gain. 19 carries, 20, 121 yards now for DuBose. Nebraska a little bit slow getting this play off. See, it's 15 seconds to go. They're going to have to hustle a little bit. Clayton option. And they throw him down for a yard loss back at the 14. So it'll be third down and still about 10. Plus, as McGowan made that play for Florida State. So the Seminoles get their back up down here when they're in trouble. Now we, we see Nebraska into a passing situation, Keith. They've been primarily running. Preference to run the football when they get into trouble. Then they have long yards in behind. This is a key. As we see Chuck Camato trying to give the signal what, what defense to play. Third and 11. Brayton throws a very bad pass. He was trying to throw a screen over there, the same kind of a play that worked a moment ago for DuBose, but this time, he's lucky to get the ball back. He, if the ball hadn't been deflected, it would have been intercepted. Yep. The lineman given the rush, hit the ball, knocked it down, otherwise the Florida State defender, I think, would have picked it off. They'll go for three as Dale Klein comes in and puts his tee down at the 21, so it'll be a 31-yard kick into the wind with 10.08 to play. It'll still leave Nebraska a point behind. Klein kicked four out of eight last year. Fewest number of any regular kicker in Division I football. Wingard gets a good snap, handles it all right. Klein puts it up and misses. 
behind misses to the left and a groan goes up from the sea of red. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't work? Plain simple mistakes. The quarterbacks are two out of ten for 22 yards and one sack. And Kurt Coker is the quarterback now, replacing Danny McManus, who was shaken up the last time. He's still sitting on the bench. Coker gives the ball inside, and Nebraska jumps all over the ball carrier at about the 21-yard line. Cletus Jones. Having your second quarterback in the ball game, Keith, really changes your strategy. Uh, coming in cold, you don't want to put him under the gun. Scow number 96 makes another fine play, stunning to the inside, pulling in on the trap play, nowhere to go. Watch him reach out and just grab him with that left arm, right arm, left hand, pull him to the ground. Oh, Scow's had a great game, number 96. Second down and nine. Coker gives the ball to Sammy Smith, the big freshman tailback. And Smith, just that quickly, is out close to the 27-yard line. Tim Brandt. Keith, we just checked on quarterback Danny McManus of Florida State. He took a shot under the chin when he went down that last series. They are resting him. He will be back. They think he is fine now. His head is clear. His chin is a little bit sore, but he's going to be back in the ballgame. Well, if Nebraska keeps uh, giving up opportunities, they may not need him. Keith, Nebraska very desperately needs to stop Florida State on this third down conversion situation. With a second string quarterback in there, they should be coming. They should be blitzing. Third and four. No, they're defending. Oh, they are. They did. Coker's pass is away. And, and the pass is out of the interference. And the Ruska man went up over the back. Mike Carl. And the official standing right behind the play threw the flag, the pass intended for Darren Holloman. The penalty is less than 15 yards, so it'll be first down at the spot. Two penalties for pass interference in college now. 24, Holloman going down, hooking, trying to make the first down, get beyond the, the yard marker and pull it up. And the ball is a little bit late getting there. Carl, number 42, comes up. Now, if he touches the receiver before he touches the ball, it's pass interference. He hasn't touched him yet, has he? I haven't seen him touch him yet. He's going for the ball all the way around, gets his That's hands cool. on the ball and never touched the receiver. I don't think he interfered with him. I think uh, Holloman was slipping, trying to come back to the ball, wasn't he? That's the way I saw it. Now, if they call, maybe they wipe the penalty off. They haven't uh, exercised the penalty yet. They've had their conference. Two officials there. One called and one didn't call. Now, that, to me, is I don't understand the pass inter interference rule. If the pass interference occurs less than 15 yards, it's at the spot, first down. If the interference occurs Defensive. beyond... Pass interference, first down. Keith, I might that, like to see that one again. Well, now look, let's see it again. The end of the play, end of the pass interference call. If the receiver, if the defender touches the receiver before he touches the ball, it's pass interference. Didn't touch it, did he? I don't believe that he touched it. Maybe his feet did. Maybe they felt he tripped him. It's not a penalty. Sammy Smith on the pitch. Off the first down for Florida State, up just beyond the 42, and he's across midfield. Boy, he is strong. Keith, I still say the penalty was wrong. Doesn't matter. It's no, affected. It doesn't, it's affected. That's right. <laughs> it's not. There are two penalties on pass interference. If it's pass interference, if it's less than 15 yards, it's at the spot first down. If it's more than 15 yards downfield, it's a 15-yard penalty. Come on, you got to stop him here now. We do change the rules off to college. <laughs> I noticed that. Oh, I mean, we just changed it again right here. <laughs> well, that's where I remember it anyway as of last year. I think the clock was running here, too. I think they're probably going to have to reset the clock attack. Good point, Keith. A split crew just do not work as effectively as a crew from one conference or one, one um, area. He's coming over, Keith. You're right. 17-13, that's what it was at halftime. No scoring. Nebraska has had two golden opportunities, and they've messed them both up. He wants 15 seconds put back on the clock. That'll take them out past eight minutes to play the ball game. So 
So while we're waiting for them to straighten out the time, here's Jimmy. This word from the United States Open Tennis Tournament at Flushing here in New York. Earlier in the first men's semifinal, John McEnroe down two sets to none at one point and down love two in the fifth set, came back to beat persistent nemesis Mats Wielander. In warm-ups for the second semifinal, Jimmy Connors has injured an ankle. He has had electrical stimulation from a trainer. The ankle is now elevated. It is uncertain at this moment as to whether Connors will be able to take the court in the second semifinal against Yvonne Lindell, though the report from Flushing is that Connors, of course, being the competitor he is, will try as hard as he can to play. So Jimmy Connors and Lindell still to come, and now let's go back to Keith Jackson. By the way, uh, Lindell's playing. You want all your tools when you're out there against him right now, don't you? Yes. It's second down and inches. And they go down the middle for it and appear to have it. They do. Florida State has the wind in their favor. Kirk Coker is in in relief of Danny McManus, who was belted in the end zone after throwing the pass. McManus is still sitting on the bench on the sidelines getting ice and being kept quiet. Nebraska defense needs to rally. They need the leadership. There's Munford and Knox, two outstanding players, all big eight. Because Knox is not in there. Force number 38 is in there for, for Knox. It's first down. Here's the yeah. Huskers 46-yard line and Coker a little quick pop and it's dribbled by Phil Bryant. No good. Keith, that was a side adjustment by the quarterback. Next week, we'll be looking at BYU Washington, depending on where you are. UCLA Tennessee, down in the south and other places. BYU and UCLA play tonight. Washington plays Oklahoma State later. Tennessee starts next week. There's Danny McManus. Well, he doesn't look like a quarterback that's going to go back in there and help lead the charge up the mountain to me. Second down, 10. Poker hands to Cletus Jones. Jones is to about the 44, where it'll be third down and eight. Jim Scow's had a great ball game, hasn't he? Well, he has that sneaky speed, is what his coaches told me. He's so quick. You see number 96 just make the charge. He beats the tackle 79 inside, where he is now free to just chase and make the play, and he does just that. Smith, Tony, and David Palmer in the backfield now for Florida State. Third at eight. Back up quarterback in the ball game. First real long yardage situation for him. Look out for this little 24 coming into your picture. He's down the middle. They go the other way. There's Tony Smith who is belted down at the 39-yard line just over the 40. And that is short of the first down. It'll be fourth down and two. Brian Siebler made that play. When you have the blitz, it's accompanied by man-for-man -man in the secondary. Siebler is the safety man coming up, picking up the halfback out of the backfield. And he makes a beautiful one-on-one -on -one tackle after the kick. He makes a decision. He cannot make the play. Then he goes for the tackle and prevents the first down. Now it's Lewis Berry to punt. He's done a heck of a job for him today. Here's the block. Gets it out. And it's back into the end zone, and Vaughn Shepard decides not to return the ball. Neither official have given a signal yet. They're not sure what happened. Well, I'll tell about. you one thing, Shepard better learn. He better learn to make his decision in greater haste, lest he not survive the season. Back here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, we've got an update on Florida State quarterback Danny McManus. When he stood up, he got very woozy when we thought he was going to go back into the ball game. Now he's coming in and out of this thing. He's got a headache. He's a little bit dizzy. They're keeping him out. Right now, the trainers doubt very seriously, Keith, if he's going to be back in the ball game. All right, Jimmy, thank you. It is Nebraska's ball. First down at the 20. Paul Miles, Ken Kalen, McCathern, Clayton. The backs for Nebraska. Looks like Tom Osborne said to Clayton, go win it. Passes zip downfield. Threw the ball right over an open Todd Frame. How's it? Mule number 40 is the free safety. He's playing center field. Once he determines where the ball is going to be thrown, he has a chance to gamble, and he goes up and jumps. The ball was very oh. poorly thrown, as Keith has already mentioned. 
and had Newell really expected that throw to throw him out, intercepted it. Yeah, but Frayne was wide open in front of him. Oh, yes, yeah, very much. Dubow shouldn't go anywhere. Or oh, Miles it is, Paul Miles, brought down by Stanley Scott, a senior from Brandon, Florida, who has emerged here in the second half to become a defensive factor in relief of Gerald Nichols. When you live by the run and you get behind in the fourth quarter, it's difficult. Something big has got to happen. You don't have the tight passes, Keith. You don't, you aren't set up with a sophisticated pass attack to move the length of the field. You've got to do it with runs mixed in with play action passes and Florida State has played them beautifully. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six defensive backs in there now for Florida yeah. State. As DeVos and Wackman return. Third down and 12. Clayton's option up the middle. Here he comes. He got the first down. Wolf will mark that one down as a play of the game, depending on what happens from here on. Third down and 12, and the quarterback sees a little daylight. Well, that's 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 all right. But then he rec he knows and he has confidence. He has the ability. He's four or five in the 40, and he's going to make this first down as he turns up. Look at the little zigzag, little move there, little weave. Picks those feet up and then tucks his head and dies for the first down. And only five and a half minutes to play in the ball game. There he goes. Team trailing, and here goes Rathman again. Tom Rathman rips his way to the 48-yard line for another Husker first down. Florida State defensive lineman getting a little bit tired. The second team has been in. Ewell, right here, number 40, misses the tackle right here. Or at least, yes, he, yeah, he does hang on. Finally pulls him down, and maybe it's a good thing. Boy, Nebraska, 4.45 to play in the game. That missed field goal earlier makes a big difference right now, Oh, oh for it is it ever. Here's the blitz. That's Dubose with it. And a yard to Doug, and that's it. They're really looking for him now. When the blitz is on, reverse plays aren't usually effective. Reverse plays are good when the defense are flowing, pursuing, chasing the first fate. There's the time left on the clock. Timeouts left. Both teams have three apiece. Goal will not help them. They have to score a touchdown. Kalen is in there at fullback. Nebraska. And Catherine Clayton intercepted. Threw it too low, Keith. Threw the ball too low. Was trying to touch it in. And it is picked off by Paul McGowan. Bad pass. The tight end frame was open. It could have been completed had he arched the ball. Clayton should have arched the ball over the linebacker's head. But once again, a team that prefers running when they get behind. But let's watch it right here. He throws the ball too low. McCowan makes the interception and stops the drive. We'll be right back with Florida State leading 17 to 13. Hey, you thinking what I'm thinking? Meet Nissan's hottest truck, the best-selling King Cab. And now with 8.8% .8 financing, it's even hotter. 8.8 .8 plus 9 cubic feet of lockable storage and jump seats behind the buckets. 8.8 .8 can save you hundreds of dollars in interest on any new Nissan truck. Yahoo! Jump into 8.8, .8, but hurry, the time's running out. The savings are amazing. The name is Nissan. Patience. That's what struck me the most learning about Coors beer. From the malting to the brewing, aging, the whole process. They never hurry. It takes about twice as long to make Coors as it does any other major beer. Yeah, they do take their time. But you can taste the difference right here. A beer that's a little less heavy, never bitter. But with all the spirit and patience of a great beer. Coors is the one. Next Saturday on CFA Football, last year's two top-ranked teams collide as BYU meets Washington or UCLA takes on Tennessee. Check the game in your area on ABC Sports. In turnovers, with 3.59 to play, Nebraska has three and Florida State only one. But again, you go back to another stat. The Nebraska quarterbacks are two of 12. That comes to haunt you, Keith. It comes back to haunt you when you get behind. 
Florida State from the 44. Hooker pitches the ball to Tony Smith. Hard running by Smith, but a more determined effort by Nebraska's defensive legion. Boy. And he loses back to the 40. Did Nebraska come after him on that play? He's needing to stop him and get the ball back. That defense showed me some character, penetrated, and made a great play in stopping Smith. Boy, that clock is becoming a big factor now. Normally you can run three plays and punt. If the team, opposing team do not use a timeout, you use up about two minutes, Keith. Just about two minutes before of the clock. Sammy Smith is in. And out wide this time. A new formation for Florida State is Cooker. Unloads it to Smith. And how do you do back at the 35? Welcome to college football, Sammy. Brian Washington. Boom. Did Washington hit him right in the in the jaws with him. Boy, he made a tackle. Washington just laid back and came up and timed it perfectly. Top of your screen, a little uh, outlet pass, safe, trying to do anything to get it intercepted. Now watch this tackle. Woo. That's a great play by Washington. 3-0-1 to play in the football game, and the Seminoles now are trying to protect a four-point lead. A four-point lead. I said protecting. Perhaps a better word is defending. Travis Turner throwing on the sidelines, and Travis will probably be, be, uh, be sent back into the game for the next possession. Right now, it's third down and about 19 yards for Florida State. Nebraska defense asserting itself in this series. Coker is back. Swings it out for Chuck Wells. Munson comes all the way across the field and picks him right into the bench. Florida State did not want to go out of bounds on that play. That's a difference of 25 seconds. That doesn't sound like much, but only 2:54 left. 20 seconds is a 25 seconds is a lot of lot of time. Both players went tumbling into the bench, and Wells has not been able to get up. Munford went in head first. Boom! Oh, I mean, he just oh, crashed he, into that bench. He's a competitor. Here's the block on the and here's the punt by Barry. Gets it out of there, and he killed it. Knocked it out of the county. Way back into the end zone, and ricochets off the stadium wall. That was a 61-yard punt with a little help from a friendly win. College football scoreboard coming up to run down all the games for you today, and there have been surprises. And right now here in Lincoln, Nebraska, we've got a bit of a surprise on the burner. As Nebraska, with 2 minutes and 46 seconds to play, trails Florida State by four and we haven't decided yet on the Chevrolet play of the game we've been arguing about it for a while <laughs> but we haven't decided a lot of lot of time left for a big play Travis Turner goes back to throw zips it to the sideline Schnitzler makes the catch but did he not step out of bounds before he caught the ball on the isolation we'll find out if it was a legal reception if Schnitzler catches a ball in the air and he's thrown out of bounds by the no, no, defender. I mean, right here. That's what I mean. If he's thrown out no, of bounds. No, he didn't step out. He didn't. He stopped just short of it. I thought when he planted his left yep. foot, he might have hit the top. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. He didn't. It's a first down up at the 38. <laughs> Turner looking to throw. Throws the slant pattern. Interference. Keith, you'll find out if it's at the point that's less than 15 yards, it should be first down right there at the point. And under, as I understand the rule, you don't penalize 15 yards, but he's coming back. Oh, he's doing, yeah, he's coming back. Very good call on the pass interference. Maybe I'm all wrong on the, on the penalty. The defender, Rod William, Smith. He, he runs right into him. Yep. Before the ball, the ball gets Eric there. Williams ran right over. Well, it was less than uh, 15 yards, so he get you get the 15 defensive yard penalty, pass right? interference. First down. Ball goes to the Florida State 47. Two minutes and 24 seconds to play in the game. Seminoles leading, and they've been leading since halftime by four. Referring close. Shepard. 41. 
used too, up a lot of time. Too Keith. slow to develop. Too slow to get it started. And on, in a situation like this, the reverse play is not that not that effective as a rule. It, teams are looking for trick plays right now. Two two timeouts, plenty of time really to get in there. Two minutes to go and two timeouts left. Florida State's got to keep everything in front of them and try to prevent them from going out of bounds. Florida State's having a hard time getting lined up, Keith. Second down, four. Look at this. Ball is rolling around on the ground. Florida State man covers it, but they may call him down. It's number 83, Stanley Scott, who came blowing in on Travis Turner. Nebraska time. All right, now the referee has a discretionary timeout. He stopped it right there. Tom Osborne now, calls okay, now they call it, but the referee could have stopped it right there, discretionary for just a few minutes, seconds. Nebraska with one left. Oh, the rush was on. The blitz timed perfectly. Disguised. Nebraska was not able to pick it up. All the way through. 38 McGowan. 71 Stroud. From the outside. Who was that? 83. 83. Stanley, Stanley, Scott. Stanley Scott. Just a Five sophomore. big plays. Yep. In this uh, second half. Boy, he's big and fast. I got him down in the seat. Oh, heck. Yeah. 83, Stanley Scott. He's their designated pass rusher. Time out for Beatty. One by Nebraska. More importantly, perhaps, it is third down and close to 12. Here again, a team that is predominantly a running team has a trouble, has trouble coming from behind in a two-minute offense. Let's see what happens. The pin is on. Double One, team. 37 to play. Dubose outside. It'll be fourth down and six. But you don't have much of a passing. You're in trouble using up a lot of the clock. Minute 24. They've got the throw on this down. Dubose did pick up five yards on the play and four yards. Boy, the Florida State's got to get lined up, Keith. They're just having a hard time getting, getting their assignment. In the blitz. Ball is deflected. The pass is incomplete. Train the tight end who has had a hard time all day getting the ball thrown to him. Again was available, but it was deflected at the line of scrimmage, and that may have been the last cast by Nebraska's offense. On fourth down and six, they're unable to convert it. Florida State gets the ball back, and time 1-0-3 in play. Watch this play now, and watch what happens to the ball. Turner is throwing the ball, and it hits the back of head, Lewis. It hits the back of number 68, 68, and he was 6'6", standing there, and Turner didn't have enough presence of mind to throw it over his head. And they got Illinois coming in here next. With that they'll air get, circus. They'll get some things corrected on the offense. They're going to have to really work. The Nebraska's going to have to work better on their passing game. What are they, 2 for 12 or some 13? Here's the blitz. Penalty flag goes down on the play. It's blocked now, 1 3 Never got started on that one because the flags flew before the play ever really took, took effect. It's against Florida State. 1980, the Seminoles came in here to Memorial Stadium, won the ball game 18 14 with a great kicking game after Nebraska jumped out to the 14 0 lead. 1981, they came back, got whipped roundly, 34 A dead 14. ball, false start on the offense. It's still first down. Keith Bobby Bowden told me last night that when they won the game in 80, uh, they had no turnovers, none, and Nebraska had uh, four turnovers, and that was the difference in the ball game. Florida State has played pretty much an error-free game, only one turnover today. Holloman comes wide. I don't expect he'll get the ball. It'll be first down. <laughs> about 18 and Kirk Coker now just falling on the ball trying to eat up the clock as Nebraska will have to spend its last time out it takes about 30 seconds to run the next two plays so they should be able to get out Keith without having to punt it coming up next college football scoreboard and right now let's have a look at the campus of the University of Nebraska Bobby Bowden 
one of the great bucket kickers of all time in college football. He just doesn't go along with the norm. He takes what he's got and does the best he can with it. And I think he's probably done the greatest sales job on a bunch of freshmen and sophomores that you could ever hope. Tom Osborne, on the other hand, has watched his football team just mistake itself into the hazardous position it's in now, in danger of losing the opening game. 17-13 with 58 seconds to play, and the Huskers have no timeouts remaining. That'll get a flag. There's either movement on the offense or encroachment by the defense. They really didn't have a yard between them that time either. <laughs> Well, Florida State doesn't want to stop the clock. They, they feel like that they, they can run the clock out without punting, taking 25 seconds in the huddle and snapping the ball and using about four or five seconds. They don't want to have to punt it if they can keep from it. It's against Nebraska encroachment or offside, if you like. 58 seconds remain to play. You don't see the Huskers lose many openers, especially here. But they're on the verge of losing. A the dead ball encroachment foul on the defense. It's still second down. Florida State's next game will be September 21 against Memphis State. Then they play Kansas, and then October 12, they go to Auburn. Florida State plays so many games on the road, Keith, you have to give them credit. They, not being a conference team, they have, it's tough for them to get big games without going on the road. Poker snap in his hands, rolls on top of it on the ground. And the clock now is moving at 50 seconds, and the Cornhuskers can't stop it. Nope, and they can stay in the huddle, 25 seconds. The sea it's of red has parted. Keith, they need Going to snap home. the ball without a penalty, otherwise they'll stop the clock and they will not start it uh, until the snap. They need to, they, if they stay in the huddle, that's a little bit of a mistake, they'll end up having to punt it or run on fourth down. Because it, after 25 seconds, the, the referee's discretion, they need, how much time on the clock? Six seconds. Five, they need, yeah, they four, need to snap it. Three, they need to snap it. Two. One. They did. Oh, boy, that's squeezing it, isn't it? <laughs> Had they not, the clock do it, folks. The game is over. The clock now, it's a matter of running off the final 10 seconds. And the game is in the hands of the Florida State Seminoles. Great victory, Keith. Just a tremendous victory for Florida State. 17-13, Florida State, your final score. The Seminoles get out to a 2-0 start in 1985. The Nebraska Cornhuskers lose their opening ball game. Keith Jackson, Frank Rawls, and Tim Brandt at Memorial Stadium. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arles. Coverage of today's game produced by Chuck Howard. Directed by Andy Sedaris. Our technical director, Jeff Suarez. Associate director, Jack Graham. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by National Car Rental. If you're running for business or pleasure, you deserve national attention.